Welcome back to another episode of Collector's Quest. I'm Tyler here with Johnny after a long early morning of research. We finally got the insert episode ready to go, right? We're good? Yes, we we sat down and we were discussing, you know, episode ideas. We wanted to do we wanted to do some episodes on making your collection better, your existing collection better, things you could do with your existing collection. Improving it. You know, nerd stuff that we like to do. What do we talk about all the time? Variants and inserts. And we were talking about and researching cool inserts that we could talk about. What flipped the script? So in the back of our minds, we knew that we had a few tattoo games. Like off the top of my head, I could think of like two or three (laughs) Um, yes. And then we just kind of went into a rabbit hole and realized that there's not only an episode's worth, like sometimes you can hit like six of something and make an episode out of it. There are so many games that come with temporary tattoos, Johnny. It's actually out of control. It is out of control. It, it, what's funny about this episode is I'm like, we got to do the temporary tattoo episode. And I've been saying that, what, for like four years or something. And you're always like, there's not enough of these stupid things. And we never really looked. And then when we did, I cannot believe the volume of temporary tattoos that we are overwhelmed with and tattoo related content. It's baffling. So we've wanted to do this with something like Pogs. And I don't think we ever got enough. Did we make a Pog episode? If we made a Pog Uh, episode, we must have just squeaked it over the line because there aren't that many video game Pogs. No, not not that come in a video game specifically. And that is part of our criteria. Like it it has to come in the game usually or be so hardly adjacent to it that we can't resist talking about it. All right, Johnny, before we uh, we start going off talking about tattoos, while doing the research for this episode, uh, something I did a lot was type in name of a game tattoo on eBay and something this year flipped on eBay. It is actually crazy i don't know if it's like anti-ai or something that they're doing maybe they're trying to foil price charting if you search for something on ebay it will so freely just strip out one of your search terms that it can't find it's nuts it it does the makari thing remember like how bad i used to complain about how bad makari searches are they've just got this idea that whatever you searched for you didn't mean it And they want to show you as much bullshit as they can to try and sell you stuff. And I fucking hate it, Tyler. I cannot tell you the way I hate eBay right now. They're just, yeah, they're just like, well, you're on eBay. So obviously you're here to buy something, right? Look for these things instead. Don't you just want to buy something? It's like, no, I want to buy the thing I'm asking you to look for. I do want to buy something. This thing specifically, please stop. Oh my God. Tyler, if you're not putting everything in brackets and parentheses now, you can't even use it. Uh, no, it, so I like, yeah, you put in like parentheses and stuff. It'll still ignore that all the terms in the parentheses and it will just give uh, you other unrelated results. You want to hear a, a really good one? Now, sometimes if you put a minus in front of a thing, it'll fucking own the search so hard. It'll just be like. Because it, like, has meta-tagged all of that, like, with that one word you don't want in it, it suddenly will find zero auctions for a thing that definitely has those descriptions there. Johnny, I love it. I've been honing my eBay search skill. Like, they haven't changed, like, the syntax or anything. I have honed my eBay search skills over 20 years! Like, yes. We are eBayers. We know how to do this. A lot of us just sit there like it's a hobby to scroll through eBay and try to find like weird mislisted shit or like rare shit, like all the stuff we want. Like, this is what we do. We have perfected how to search eBay. Like, I know what like misspellings to use for certain things. Like, I know how to find stuff. And when eBay is just like, no, they don't want to not show me results when literally the most useful eBay searches are the ones that return zero results and then you get that one hit for something. That's all my saved searches are things like that. Nope, not anymore. Oh, it's so annoying. And I realized, like, yes, you could still, like, probably, like, tweak and put things in quotes and, like, finagle with it to make eBay work correctly again. But, I mean, come on. It's just, it's shitty. It doesn't feel good. You know, you know those moments when a new product releases 
and it's like in one of your obscure save searches, it just has the right words. And then you're like, I got to go back and fix that now. I hate when that happens. And now that's just all of eBay. If you if you haven't experienced this, like you must not be searching on eBay manually a lot, because like sometimes I hear people, they'll say like, oh, Google's not as good as it used to be, which, yeah, I guess it's not. And like chat GPT isn't as good as it was eight months ago. Like, OK, like how are we measuring this quality? This is like night and day. It went from like eight out of 10 to two out of 10 super fast. It was like a switch flick. And it's just it shows you bullshit all the time now. It's been going downhill, like if you're doing, because I do a lot of broad general searches uh, on a daily basis, and it's been going downhill for a little while, but it has gotten noticeably worse over the last three months. The other thing it does is when you click a sold listing, it shows you something else. It's just this bullshit, like they want to be the content feed. They like think they want to be like TikTok and Instagram. They're just going to show you some shit and maybe you'll click buy now on some of it. But when I'm searching through sold listings, literally the only thing I care about is looking at the exact sold listing I clicked. And now it's two clicks. It, it's it's crazy to me that you're like, yes, I would like to see this sold listing. And it's like, oh, we're sorry. This listing sold. But here's something that's <laughs> similar. No shit. It's sold. What the fuck do you think I'm doing here? This is not I I have to click sold. I already have to make that decision. I or. <sighs> It's it like, yes. again, is it anti AI stuff? Like eBay has an API, like price charting uses the eBay API to pull all of its stuff. Like they can't just be trying to block bots. They're literally just trying to sell idiots. Dude, anything. It, it is like, we're like captcha checks away from me going insane. I'm just like, get out of here. Stop it. And it drives just, me it, like it's it's infuriating because there is no alternative to eBay. Like there was a time in the mid two thousands where there was a bunch of chase these, like, the little, chuck wagon. Yeah, there were like these like start out. You got the the not game snipe. What was it? Uh, game gavel. And there were these that, trading that was websites. Chase the chuck wagon and game gavel were the same. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, forgot about that. And you had uh, you had like game TZ and you had Guzex and you had trade games now and like all these alternative transaction things. And like some people on Amazon, but Amazon is so far away from collectors, like don't even bother unless you're trying to like really scam a grandma out of her sealed NES game that she accidentally Can't listed. Can't even look at a picture. All you have, it's eBay and then like a little bit of Mercari and like offer up, what not? What are you talking? I'm not going to go and like search the abyss of that. Like those are the dregs. So eBay needs to be good is what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, and Macari just made itself super buyer unfriendly. So that's out. I don't, I don't hey, care. I, so like the only reason I go to Mercari every time I buy something on Mercari, it's like, why didn't you just list this on eBay? So it would hit my save search. Like, what are you doing? Listing something on Mercari. Who the fuck searches Mercari? What is this website? Use an eBay buy it now. Come on. Uh, these things are upsetting and stupid. I don't like them. I don't know. This is not just old man yelling at clouds, mad about change. This is just, it's the inshittification of all things internet. And like, it's finally come to eBay. Yeah. The internet, the internet sucks. I hate it so much. Dude. You know how people are like, oh, and then people are just going to be so much more sucked into screen. And I'm just like, man, the internet is getting so much worse every day. I'm becoming so much less interested in all of this stuff. Remember the the good old days of the internet when it was like awesome and now it's, you're just like, God, it's so, you hate to sound like this, but it's like so corporate and everything's just advertisement. Everything's fucking fake. Just no thanks. So the weirdest part about this happening to eBay specifically is that they have been so collector focused, especially since COVID. Like I've seen so much sports card and Pokemon, like targeted Pokemon promos towards me. And I remember one specifically that called out, I think it was a Pikachu illustrator. And for that, the fact that there's someone on eBay making promos that even knows what a Pikachu illustrator is, I realize that's not an obscure Pokemon card, but when you consider who you would think is like working on that stupid eBay stuff that pops up like, oh, do you want 30% off like this hair blow dryers from this one seller? Like they, they, they want to get into collectibles. They must be making so much money off trading cards. 10 days ago, Johnny, we can be almost relevant here. eBay bought golden auctions. They entered into like a partnership with uh, PSA collectors, whatever they're called, 
And they bought Golden Auctions and they bought the PSA Vault, I think. Uh, something's happening yep. with the Vault. Like, they, they, they're clearly a collector-focused company. Do you know what collectors want to do? They want to make really precise save searches to find the really stupid, specific bullshit they need. When you, they're searching for a Patrick Ewing rookie card, they're not searching for any Patrick Ewing rookie card. They're searching for, like, the exact one that they need in the condition and grade that they want. Ah, it drives yep. me nuts. But they, but now they bought an auction house because eBay definitely <laughs> needed an auction house. I, I, I don't know how business works. I mean, I, I guess don't. buying out your competitors makes things a monopoly. I, how big? How big of an? I don't, I can't. Is Golden really that big? I guess Golden's that big. It just seems funny. Like, what did eBay need an auction house for? I, also, it scares me because I, I feel like buyer premiums are coming to eBay soon. I mean, I think they want you, they want to make it as buyer friendly as possible. Cause I think, I think a good part of their market is like normal people who see things like free shipping. Cause that's why they push free shipping to make buyers, you know, buy more. I don't know. I think that they don't want to do anything that would turn off all their buyers. I think they're too big for that. Mercari, like, I don't know what the fuck Mercari's doing. Mercari's a bunch of bozos. Well, all the sellers are like, yeah, no fees. And all the buyers were like, well, no, thanks. I'll just go back to eBay. I, I don't understand how everyone thought this was going to work. Like, why couldn't we split the difference or something? If they were, Yeah, I don't know. Just charge the seller. Who dude split the difference? What are you talking about? The guy selling it's I mean, getting the money. Make them pay all the fees. <laughs> yeah, or, or maybe lower your fees and make it more friendly that way. That would be pretty friendly. Um I don't care. I, I, I sell stuff on eBay that I need to get out of my house. So you know what? You buy something from me on eBay, you're getting all the bubble wrap, all the void fill, a brand new cardboard box. A brand new box is like a dollar. I get this, just like $100 packages, and they're in these reused Amazon boxes that are like pre-crushed no, for me. Spend the dollar no. on a box! No, reuse boxes. Please reuse boxes. Oh my god! Recy Do not reuse Recy boxes. Recycle. Re don't listen to what them. was recently Recycle killed. Box. I uh, something. It was a, a super ghouls and ghosts. It was completely gone because it was in a reused box and like well, the front I, got look, crushed it, in. You, sh you should use a, a reused box that is like still capable of being used. Don't don't just use any reused box, but like please reuse good boxes. Don't reuse boxes when sending stuff to me. I mean, whatever. You, I'll. I, I have to put up with so much bullshit. Hey, if you're using a box, at least it's not a bubble mailer. That's true. Uh, I we, mean, kind of, except for your ghouls and ghosts, which might as well have been sent in a bubble mailer. It was in a, a box protector, too. The box just got demolished. This poor box. That's crazy. That, that it happened. didn't see it didn't have a uh, bubble wrap, though. So it was in a box protector and he clearly thought like that would be enough. And he used like a shitty like box on its last limbs. It was probably sent multiple times through the mail. And then it had, like, the random assortment of paper, like, the clearly I'm not going to pay for real packing materials. And he just, like, went to his recycling bin and threw a bunch of shit on it. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. And that, that was the one I paid, like, a premium for. Oh, it was 100% complete. It sucks. I didn't even want the box. It had all the inserts. I just wanted the inserts. <laughs> I can't believe the inserts got destroyed. No, they didn't. But like the whole point of me paying a big premium for it was that like, oh, well, it has a nice enough box that I could like resell it and basically get my money back. And then I couldn't if I like I'm not going to negotiate like partial refunds and all that. Just just ship me my stuff that I bought in the condition I got it in. All right. Come on. No. All right. You don't have to ship me anything, Johnny. You do enough for me. I ship you stuff sometimes. It happens. Johnny, you know, what one of the things you shipped me was. It was Double no. Dragon 5 on the Sega Genesis. Oh, good transition. What's uh, <laughs> special about that? Johnny, Double Dragon 5 on the Sega Genesis comes with a tattoo. Um, I don't remember what it's of, actually. I don't have a picture in front of me. Is it the 5 logo, or it's just Double Dragon 5? It, it's a mm. lame tattoo. It doesn't matter. No, You're not going to use it. You just want it. It comes in like this little plastic baggie. When we're talking about most of these temporary tattoos, these are like one-inch squares uh, that come in a little plastic baggie. And I guess they're mostly missing because there are these people out there. And I looked at like I looked at so many listings of games that should have tattoos. And so many of them have like every single insert. Like they folded up the registration card, like like little Game Boy size registration card. They put that back in and the tattoo, they're just like, nah, I'm not gonna put that back in the case. Potentially they used it. Have you used temporary tattoos, Johnny? I, I think I used one temporary Never. tattoo as a kid, and I'm like, wow, 
This is lame, especially when my mom knew it was fake right away. Can you believe that? My mom knew it was fake. I can't believe she knew it was fake at a distance. Uh, but no, I have never been into these. I don't have real tattoos. Everyone can do whatever they want with their bodies and everything. But I was never into real tattoos or temporary tattoos, Tyler. It's just never been me. Well, Johnny, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm into video game tattoos because... Uh, I mean, I'm into this episode and all the cool tattoos we found, especially this Double Dragon 5 one, which is actually kind of a hard tattoo to find. So I agree. It's not the hardest, but... Not the hardest, but it does not come up as much as you would think. Especially considering how many copies of Double Dragon 5 are usually kicking around. But, yes. um, I mean, it could it, it could be because the Sega Genesis case, the most overrated case in video games, it's just not a good place to just, like, put a loose thing like that, like... If you it was if it's the size of a case, if it was like an entire sheet the size of a case, like some people might have slid it back in there, but like a loose little like a fruit roll up kicking around, you would never throw that back in the case. Come on. Yeah. Well, and for anyone who has this and you're like, do I have this tattoo? Check your manual, because that's like a lot of times where those things get tossed. Like right in the middle of your manual. So check those. But uh, this this is a game that like it's like a forty dollar game. It also has a poster, like importantly. So this is like a game. That has a bunch of little content with it. It'll go for like 40 bucks tower, but if it has a tattoo, suddenly it's 150 to to $100. And uh, I haven't seen any sold recently. The only one available right now on eBay is a sealed one for $400. Johnny, until I got to this point in the Sega Genesis set, I didn't even know Double Dragon 5 had a tattoo. And the reason I didn't know is because there is a game that overshadows it so hard a game that i've always thought of as like one of the prestige the, the genesis tattoo inserts game? not even tattoos like genesis inserts like i think of the captain america pin that came with captain mm -hmm. america and the avengers and i think of the punisher tattoo like what even else is there like i have my personal things that i think of the mutant league football cards those are kind of cool i think of uh the glove like that did that, come, that didn't come in the case that was a mail away right well, yeah, there's a free mail away, but still, yeah, yeah, that's a that's definitely a prestige insert. But the freaking Punisher tattoo is up there. You go on eBay solds, and it's still like the shit. Two sales yes. this year, both buy it now is six hundred dollars and eight hundred dollars for complete copies of the game with the tattoo. Nuts! This game sucks. The Punisher, the punish. All right, the Punisher isn't lame. The Punisher logo is lame. Eight, who spent $800 for it? I realize it could be a, a best offer because eBay is a nightmare now. But uh, I can't it's believe just, this, this has as much cachet as it does. I mean, typically the Punisher, like, that's the thing. The Punisher tattoos are usually around, but I feel like it was definitely, like, if you were a kid, that was definitely the one you were going to use. But I feel like I see more Punisher tattoos than Double Dragon tattoos. Maybe that's just... No, uh, I think you're definitely device. right. I think the the... They come up more, but it could be because more people have known to look out for them over like the past 30 years. Yes. And like some Absolutely. people probably hoarded a few up every time they see it. Yeah, uh, there was one that tat there. So there was two tattoos that sold for less than 500. So there was a $400 one and um, like slightly over 400. And uh, those had tattoos. One, Well, one didn't have the game, but one did have the tattoo. And sometimes they don't have the, the reg card, because the reg card for Punisher is also hard to get. What a weird game. I don't understand. Also, it, the, the box art for this game is trash. This will be part of our Marvel Comics episode, so just don't, don't forget about it. I totally derailed you. Oh, it... Like... I wouldn't understand it at the prices it goes for, but if like the Punisher was like this really beloved and good game, and I'm I'm even struggling to think of a uh, like an older really good superhero game that people love. I'm struggling. Like the first thing that comes to mind is Shinobi One that has the Spider Man in it. People don't like Spider Man on Atari. People don't really like Superman on Atari. They don't like Superman on Commodore sixty four. Give me an old game that old comic game people like, Johnny. X-Men um, 2. All right. I don't know. That's just one that I love personally. But people do like X-Men 2 on the Genesis. That's a pretty cool well, game. Well, they like Street Fighter versus Capcom. Like, that's not uh, even old enough. I, I want to think of something PS1 from the same era. PS1 isn't old enough? No, I want something from the same era as this Punisher uh, thing. Because like, Punisher sucks. Okay. Uh, <laughs> War of the Gems. People liked War of the Gems. All right. I've never played it, so I don't know. Yeah. 
All right. I, 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 basically, um, I'm saying I would get it if the game was good, but it is not a beloved game. No, it, it's not a premium. And we don't have to spend this much time talking about this. No, I just, it, we, it's the premier tattoo. It I is. Think it, it, it's it, almost it like is the top the ta- of the set. I, I, yeah, I, I'll give you. If you were collecting the tattoo set, this is this is not only on your Mount Rushmore. This is the George Washington on your Mount Rushmore. Yeah. All right. Should it be? No. <laughs> we're going to talk no, about some but cool it is. ones, Johnny. Um, all right. Tell me more. Tell me more. All right, Johnny. Let's go from an $800 tattoo. That's an exaggeration to something that you might actually be missing and can very easily afford. All of the digital pictures Sega CD games. These are oh. the Sega CD games that come in a cardboard blue box that kind of unfolds like a book. I don't, I'm, it's 3 a.m. The terminology is escaping me. All of these come with a bunch of inserts. Uh, and all of them have a DP logo tattoo. So this would be we sure do. Kids on Sight, Slam City with Scotty Pippen, Corpse Killer, and Night Trap, specifically the Blue Box Night Trap. Yeah, but also the yellow box of Corpse Killer also has the tattoo. Does the, I'm sure the yellow box of Slam City has it too, then. Or is that only yellow box? I don't even remember. Yeah, no, yellow, uh, Slam City has both variants, right? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, this is, like, if you have a lot of Sega CD games, there's a good chance one of these is missing the tattoo, if not multiple. And you could literally go and buy, like, a copy of Kids on Sight for $15 to $20 that has the tattoo. And for whatever reason, you look at all these Genesis games, like, they're all missing the tattoo. These Sega CD games, they all have the tattoo. I don't know what's going on. Just because no one played them. No, kids, kids couldn't afford these Sega CD games, so they didn't get to the tattoos. That's fascinating insight, Johnny. So if you had The Punisher, like, I know it's not a good game, but you're probably into it as a kid because you don't know any better. You probably open and close that box a lot. And eventually, one of the times the tattoo didn't make it out of the box, although I'm sure it was the first time. But yeah, if you had kids on site, if you had Slam City, you probably played it like twice. <laughs> you're like, no, thanks. Or used like a CD wallet or something. Yeah, I could totally see why uh, why these things survived. Also potentially the punisher logo that's a cool five minutes of temporary tattoo for a for a six-year-old the dp logo you don't think that kids should put (laughs) d and p on them you think putting dp on children is not something that should have been allowed just so you know johnny ai is against our will transcribing our episodes now so whatever you say is now transcribed listened to and transcribed by ai uh, oh, I could good. read so our whole episode in say, iTunes. Every time I say kids and DP, um, <laughs> I'm getting flagged by the FBI. To be very clear, I'm talking about a, t- a tattoo that says DP uh, for the internet and the FBI. And that stands for digital pictures. Not not something else. Uh, okay, so everyone uh, keep your ears perked up because this is the second to last time probably that we will be mentioning something that you will realistically buy for a low price to complete a thing. Because I think you could buy a kid's on site to go and complete your variant of Night Trap. That's fine. You sure could for like $20. Johnny, what else have we got going on? We, well, we have a lot. Where would you like to go? The world is our oyster as far as tattoos go. Um... Look, I I think this one's for you. I, I think this is for you because I made a very bold statement in an episode not so long ago, Tyler. We were talking about which version of Barbarian 2 sh- you should buy. And I said you should definitely don't buy Acts of Rage. Buy Barbarian 2. Make sure it has the poster. Especially because, and this was in our Collecting Controversy episode, because it was all full of boobs. And Acts of Rage just put some dude's face on it. It was the American version. No boobs for us. I said, screw that. But Tyler, was I wrong about that? Was that the wrong thing to say? So to be clear, Barbarian and Barbarian 2, these are the the Commodore. Commodore era games are on a bunch of computers. uh, And they've got uh, like an adult film actress fully clothed not fully clothed, (laughs) on the cover. The only reason we mentioned it is because it was controversial for the cover. And then we said the game was pretty awesome, like, in a bad way. It had decapitations. The first game has a nude code, which might be the first nude code ever, which is, like, the most, like, oh, yeah, the late 80s, early 90s are so radical kind of thing. 
And then we told you to buy the PAL version of the game, which is Barbarian 2. The original version, of course, uh, with the better cover. But the one thing that Acts of Rage, the American release of Barbarian 2 has, it comes with a tattoo of the Acts of Rage logo, which is a blood splattered thing, Johnny. That is super dumb. It's so dumb. I can't. It, I cannot believe we're talking about Barbarian Two again. Everybody again. forgot what Barbarian Two is. It's a one-on-one fighting game for microcomputers. It looks. It's trash. I can't believe we're talking the, about this game again. This is the third episode we've talked about this. It's, it's absolute insanity. Like we have to be buying all the copies of Barbarian Two. This is. Uh, this is some real hot shit. It, it's. It's crazy that this has been brought up three separate times. I don't even know how we got here. So a little are. bit crazy, like you've never heard of this game in the real world as an American, right? Like I, I understand some people in Europe might be more familiar with Barbarian. No. Uh, this game is like dirt common. Like any platform you want, less than 40 bucks probably, maybe sealed, and they all have the tattoo. This is a rad ass tattoo. This is like Axe of Fury. What's the name of the game? Axe of Rage. Uh, and no one used the tattoo. Nope. Still very available. Not too expensive either. Yep. Uh, yeah, there's a few, it. so, uh, I, I'm going to give a shout out to a website that I love and a YouTube channel that I love retrogames.co.uk. This is a guy who resells, uh, all sorts of British computer games. Yeah. We've talked about him before. Yeah. It's, it's my, I buy a lot on eBay and this is like, how many times do you go to an individual website to buy things? Like, would you, I, I, I know you can go to like Surugaya is, has like a, a website for foreigners where they can buy Japanese video games. And like, it's, it's so much more expensive than Yahoo Japan. Like, why would I ever go to Surugaya? I'm just going to buy the same thing from Yahoo Japan and the same Every thing time. with any computer game. I'm just going to go to eBay. Right. Yep. This guy's this guy's stock is so good. He constantly gets new stuff in and his prices are still really good. Like the cheap garbage, like a lot of these computer tapes are garbage. And he knows that and he sells them for like 50 pence to a pound. And like, that's what they're worth a lot of the time. And like, you know, for some of the stuff, it goes up, but there's nothing crazy. Like a lot of stuff is under like 40 pounds. And he has an eBay site. Like, he is an eBay seller as well. So some of his nicer stuff will cross over to his eBay store. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yep. Uh, the the hidden gem here, if you're not subscribed to his YouTube channel, which I don't know off the hand, but... Oh, oh man. I didn't know... Wait, he's got a YouTube channel? He's the best! Because oh, man. my favorite part of his website is you can go and click on, like, this Com- British Commodore 64 game you've never heard of. And he'll tell you, like, which variant it is, and he'll be like, it comes with the special sticker that's so often missing. That's so rare. And it'll be a game, like, you can't imagine anyone has ever heard of. But, like, he's not just, like, some flipper reselling junk from flea markets. He knows, like, oh, this one's rare. This one's cool. This one's complete. Oh, this one's missing the registration card. Like, he'll put stuff like that. Yeah, this is a guy that I want to sit down with. So he's how I found out that Ghostbusters 2 uh, for the Commodore 64 has a balloon. There's a balloon with the Ghostbusters logo. Oh, yeah. And a pin. So, like, yeah. And he'll put, like, doesn't have the pin. And you're like, wait, there's a version that does have a pin? What is going on? Like, and he he doesn't hide that stuff. He's like, just so you know, this one's less money because of this. He's great. Uh, I did not know he had a YouTube channel, but now you need to send me his name on YouTube because I will be subscribed. It's retrogames-co-uk. He's got 5,000 oh. subscribers. It's just the same as the website. Yeah. Okay. And so Done. he he posts uh, like new stock he gets in. He has like a table and he posts the exact games he gets. And he's like, look at all this cool shit. And he, he's so excited oh over his like fucking computer bullshit. And like these how videos get like man? a thousand views. And how old is he? How, how, old, how old do you think he is? He's selling British computer games. I don't he's know, in like his 50s. Yeah. 58. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he looks exactly how you would expect him to look. And he's so excited about all this shit. He's like, I love this guy. I love buying oh. stuff from him and everyone else should too. I realize we're getting so off topic. I know there are a few like computer games of this era that do have tattoos, but uh, you're missing out if you're not watching this retro games dash co dash UK I'm, guy. I'm so I'm so for this. If um, you're interested in British computer games, because that is a lot of what he sells. Well, it's like a lot of the dumb horror stuff I get. That's like, you know just zx spectrum games it's just like a dumb cassette game i go to this guy yeah 
Especially since I can combine all the shipping on these, like, $7 tapes. I'm telling you, he's our people. He is so our people. Now, like, there's nothing, there's nothing youtube or fake about him. I, I know, like, I don't like the YouTube people either. Uh, Johnny, uh, Johnny, I, everyone knows Johnny doesn't like the YouTube people. Fuck are me. we the YouTube people? Do people think we're the podcast people? Or like, yeah, I like video game I, collectors, but not those collectors quest guys. I wonder, I wonder if we have that perception. I like, I like to think that we're the down to earth, like, you know, counterculture to that, but maybe we're not. And oh my God, this guy does look exactly how I pictured him. I'm like, I bet he's got a short white beard. He does have a short <laughs> white beard. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he's, it's incredible. I, oh God. I, dude, because you see, I like, there's some, there's some good there's obviously good mainstream gaming channels but man when you find like that that hidden gem channel has like 5000 subs it's like oh my god that's the perfect amount cuz you know that he made enough good content that he doesn't have like 27 subs and it's like all right so this guy is <laughs> shouting to the void he's got like bad audio or something like he's saying something good but like he's niche enough that like oh he's got some something to him that he's niche uh, uh he's his, his subs have gone up he's got 22k oh really oh all right oh wait what is this Good five on. point what does 5.22k mean uh that would be 5,000 <laughs> <laughs> well 5.22 uh, that's just a weird way to write it out 5.22k I mean, like, why wouldn't you just put 5,000 it doesn't seem weird to me well like that's the same number of uh, what well, Writing 5.22K is more digits than 5,022 subscribers. It's f- it's 5,220. 5.22K. It's uh, a oh yeah, decimal. whatever. It, it it's still it's still more digits. It like be, it, it becomes because yeah, of the period. Yeah, but once you hit the 10,000, then it's fewer digits. So why are they going to be inconsistent? They're just gonna as soon as you get just to like a, the number a thousand. Yeah, well, whatever. It's late. <laughs> It's late, and I think this is wrong. Also, regarding how people think of us, Johnny, Hammerfest is from Video Game Sage. Uh, Shout out if you're listening. He recently listened to the uh, recently listened to the podcast for the first time, and he said it was pretty entertaining, guys. We got a moderately good review. How about that? Hey, we did it. Sometimes we get those. Yeah, dude, love Uh, those moderately positive reviews. I'll take it. Johnny. I'll take what we can get. Let me talk about something topic. historically important. Tattoos? By historically important, I mean very marginally adjacent to an almost historically important PC game. I want to talk about what Mattel was doing in, I think, 1998, and that was making totally cool tattoo studios for boys and girls with Ooh. Barbie totally tattoos on the PC and... Hot Wheels Tattoo Designer, which were both Mattel brands, and both the boys and girls got their own little tattoo studios on PC. These are incredible. I mean, are these games? No. So no. The, I I'm beyond the I I'm beyond the distinction of games. I okay. I'll discuss something that's not a game later in the episode that I bought. But no, they're not games. But Johnny, okay. it's it's fun, entertaining PC software. Yeah, it's it's a game. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I look. I'll, I'll give it to you. Okay, I'll give it to you. I was just making a joke. Just making a joke. I it's it's a Barbie. It, it this is in our wheelhouse, and I think this is a very interesting thing um, that these exist. Tell me more about them, though. I'm surprised you don't own the Barbie one, both because I know you like Barbie games, and I it do. seems rare. Uh, Unironically, I do like Barbie games. Yeah. Um. It's like it's like a little print shop thing. You like you make a little pink sparkly heart, and you put some ice skates or like a like a shooting star on it. And then I'm sure you get like this Avery brand tattoo paper, and you put it through your printer. You'd never be able to figure this out. Like you'd never be able to hook up a 1998 printer. Now you would just it would just be impossible. I'm pretty. It's just literally impossible, and you can't do it now. Um, this is gonna go great with my Barbie nail polish game. So. That's why it's like almost interesting. It's obviously not interesting. One is interesting because it's it seems rare. Like I would imagine this comes in a big box, probably with like some sample paper, because like no one's gonna want to buy this and not use it. Uh, and I didn't find any on eBay or eBay sold. It's like they have the jewel case, but like what are you gonna do? You don't want the jewel case. You want the whole thing. And this is maybe a little bit interesting because two years oh, so this earlier, is a, 
Is this a big box or a small box? Everything's a big box. And from like the nineties, yeah, it's going to be a big. Oh, I didn't, 95. I didn't see it, but Johnny, it's going to be a big box. It comes, it okay, definitely so, yeah, comes yeah. with eight and a half by eleven sheets. Of okay, paper. yeah. I mean, I just want to clarify because if you search for a Barbie totally tattoo, you're going to find like a Barbie doll from two thousand eight, which is relevant because you make tattoos to put on your Barbies with this. Oh, I mean, I'm sure there have been more than one Barbie tattoo product. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. So in 1996, Barbie fashion designer came out, which is sometimes credited as the first successful game piece of computer software that was targeted towards girls. Um, I don't know how true that is, because it's just like something that I read as like a tidbit that keeps coming up. So I don't know if that's like a genuine historical fact or if that's just something that gets repeated and I'm over here repeating it as well. So don't put too much stock into that until you look into it. But then after Barbie fashion designer came Barbie hairstyler and nail designer and then totally tattoos. This really seems like the tail end of the what kind of stupid multimedia PC bullshit can we put out that people will still buy. Uh, So I don't know. It's in the series of fashion designer, which is a historically important game, Johnny. It is. I'm reaching here, but it's this episode. So what do you expect? I mean, it's uh, it's no horse riding, but I'll take it. And Johnny, I'm I'm calling it's the companion game, Hot Wheels Tattoo Designer. It's maybe the pick of the show. <laughs> oh, so you go you're going hard at it. Pick of the show, wow. Completely opposite of Barbie Totally Tattoos, Hot Wheels Tattoo Designer. There's like thirty new old stock copies on eBay, and I don't mean like the thirty dollar new old stock. I'm talking like ten to twenty dollar new old stock. Of a big box PC game where you make Hot Wheels tattoos. What does this game look like, Johnny? I have no idea. This is like totally available new old stock. It's a big brand. There are no YouTube videos whatsoever about Hot Wheels tattoo designer. This is an opportunity for someone. If you have some niche video game YouTube channel, you need to buy a copy of Hot Wheels Tattoo Designer for $12 and make a video about it and it will be funny and you'll get 800,000 views and you'll be doing something that no one has ever done on YouTube. Why is someone not doing this? I don't know. Uh, probably because they won't get 35,000 views. Also, I can tell by the tag that this was sold in big box stores like Target. So, um, yeah, this is all over the place. The... Uh See, like the bar, you know that the Barbie totally tattoos box, I don't even have it in front of me, but it's going to be like girls like smiling at a Barbie doll and like, yeah, I'm putting a little flower on her cheek. Isn't that cute? The Hot Wheels tattoo designer box. It's like this 11 year old kid rolling up his sleeve, making a, a muscle and showing off his rad Hot Wheel tattoos, wearing sunglasses. Oh, it's so good. Oh. So there's another box where the kid doesn't have sunglasses. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I might have made up the sunglasses okay, in my yeah. head. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, no, but you can not, imagine this just, kid wearing sunglasses, Johnny, because he's that freaking cool. You know, and I, I will say this. It's Tyler. It's uh, they're not the worst tattoos I've ever seen on a, a person. Uh, so, oh, what's the worst <laughs> tattoo you've ever seen on a person? Um, Well, I, I don't want to I don't want to throw shade at, at people in specific, but. There are like this kid's tattoos there. I've seen some that look worse, but you could, uh, you could design your own dumb tattoos for yourself or your car as the box tells us. So in addition to being, so in addition to all of this, this game comes with a Hot Wheels car. Yeah. That's which is right cool. And dude, you see a GBA game with a Hot Wheels car. You're like, hot damn. Look at that. That's, that's some really special that's a thing. hundred dollar game. At least this is garbage. You can't, they can't get rid of these. <laughs> You, you could, this is $35 and this is for you. Also, there are, there's a companion designer CD carrying case that comes with this that you can get. There's like a, a dual pack that you can get. And there was also specific Hot Wheels that also came with tattoos. So if you want all the Hot Wheel tattoo stuff, go nuts. It's all available for you. It, it, like it's all available new old stock. Yeah, I'm looking at the same lot you're looking at. Someone has just like a bunch of this Hot Wheel junk that's related to tattoos. What was with the 90s and tattoos? Well, I, I just like that there's a special edition version of this game that comes with the CD-ROM carrying case. That's oh, the is special this all, edition. Is this all sealed together? Yes, it's packaged together. And that's the special edition version. of it. This game has a special edition. Okay, so... This is like this is not a series that gets discussed enough. 
considering this thing exists. So this is a plain red CD carrying case. It's in essentially a big box PC game sized box and it's shrink wrapped to the Hot Wheel tattoo designer. And it says holds all your favorite Hot Wheels CD ROMs. That is how many Hot Wheels games existed by 1999 that they were selling a CD carrying case and promoting it as, there's so many freaking games, you can just put all Hot Wheel games in here. You got Stunt Track Racer and, and Stunt Track Racer 2 and what other Hot Wheel games are there? I don't know, Johnny. I I don't know. There's a lot okay. of Hot Wheel games. Sure. I can tell you more Barbie games than Hot Wheel games. Uh, Hot Wheels, Sport Truck, Bolt On. No, that's a car. Hot Wheels Jets, THQ PC game comes with a jet. Oh, hot, the Hot Wheels set is so cool because all the games come with the uh, with a car. Yeah, and don't okay. don't don't spend money on on stupid Hot Wheels games except for like the twelve dollar tattoo studio. Especially if you're going to make a funny YouTube video, this is prime funny YouTube video material. I mean, guys. if you're going to make a prime, you better get the special edition so you can say you've got the special edition. Oh, absolutely, forty five dollars. It's it comes with multiple Hot Wheels cars and then the sealed double pack with the carry case. Come on, that's worth it for your video that's going to get eight hundred thousand views. Yep. Um, also, I nope. genuinely think like this is stupid, but like it would be useful in a historical sense to like have footage of this piece of software. Like it literally doesn't exist. How does this footage not exist? Someone make a Hot Wheels tattoo, please. All right. It's not historically important, but Hey, I'm interested in it and I can't find it. So someone has to do it. You know, what's going to be more important than this game though? What is more relevant to our, our base? I think. And I, I mean, these are really for you, Tyler, because this hits your nostalgia. Tell me about Pokemon project studio, red and blue. Okay. Uh, yes, Johnny, this does hit me in the nostalgia. Uh, Pokemon Project Studio Red and Blue, it's a it's another one of these print shop games where you design a bunch of, like, stupid, like, you move Pokemon around and, and you make, like, greetings cards and things like that. When did this come out? Do you know? I, I, I would die if this didn't come out in 1999. I would literally die on the spot if this did not come out in 1999. All right, well, we're going to look it up. I'm I'm looking up. It came out in 1999. Okay. But the interesting thing here is that there's a Pokemon Project Studio red version and a Pokemon Project Studio blue version, and each of them contains 81 different Pokemon. So, oh my god, you have to buy them both. So I I want to know if you install both, does it just give you like the full piece of software with all the Pokemon or do you have two separate pieces of software and you can never mix like a Kakuna with a Kangaskhan because those are on the different versions? I would have no idea. This is crazy. The craziest part is that they're still splitting up the games and like the consumer hasn't revolted. They're just used to buying two Pokemon games. But the fact that they did it for a print shop, like print shop software, like the thing you would want in print shop software is having all the Pokemon. It is, it's insane. Like it's, it's just a bunch of like stock art garbage. I can't believe they split it up. Fascinating. I mean, I would say it seems weird, but it's just so on brand for Pokemon. I mean, it, it is on brand. Uh, and, and you know what? Like licensed, like absolute trash, just like absolutely like spraying a fire hose of everything branded with Pokemon is very on brand in Pokemon. Uh, you know what? To be uh, on the episode, one of the things you can make is technically temporary tattoos because you could put in the, the tattoo paper. Uh, they do advertise tattoos on the box, so I'm counting it. Well, and I, I th what I think is interesting about this one too, man, I've said the word interesting far too many times. People have Pokemon tattoos, a lot of them. There's a lot of Pokemon tattoos on people. Like, is this a foundational, like, uh, you know, uh, memory for people? Their their first Pokemon tattoos, like, did, did any of them, was this the genesis? Did they evolve from this moment? I don't know. I specifically remember wanting to buy this in a micro center. So they had the split up thing. I, it might have been because it was split up that my... Uh, my dad didn't want to buy it for me. I'm guessing more likely he was like, we have print shop at home. Shut up. You Pokemon stupid. Uh, but I did that day end up getting a copy of Puzzle Bobble, which is bust a move for 99 cents. So, you know, it, it, it probably was a good thing that uh, I didn't buy this. But I do remember this very well, Johnny. And as we were making the show, looking up prices, 
Uh, very interestingly, the price is all over the place. But these are so available new old stock, especially by one particular seller who has cases of them. Uh, and I did buy new old stock copies of both of them for $33 for both. You bought them? You did it. I absolutely bought them. Oh, man, I love that. I love that you bought them. Yeah. Uh, you know, I really like like the obscure Pokemon stuff because like there's um there's nothing interesting about a mainline Pokemon game to me ex- except for Red, Blue, and then Red and Green and Blue in Japan because those are the first. But like just a regular Pokemon game, you're talking like Pokemon Emerald or Pokemon Crystal, or especially when you get into like Pokemon Sword and Shield. Like I don't care what special edition you have, it's like. It's Pokemon Sword and Shield. Not only are there 16 million copies of these, but people know to save them now. So, like, there's 16 million copies of them. So, I like, like, the Sego Pico games that, like, they're kind of rare. And, like, this isn't rare, but, like, if all the new old stock didn't exist, like, who would have a used copy of this to sell anyone? Like, I like this, like, weird kind of off-the-beaten-path Pokemon stuff. I like uh, Pokemon Mini, which is, like, the Pokemon handheld console. Some of that stuff's cool just because it's it's Pokemon and it's not super common. And the whole thing with Pokemon is that it's the most popular thing in the world, so everything is super common. True. And do you remember 2021? Uh, vaguely, yeah, I was there. Someone is asking $750 for a sealed Pokemon Project Studio Red. VGA graded, though. Hmm. Which they Seems definitely like... bought on eBay for fifteen dollars. Yeah, someone was trying to capture some of that uh, graded game money. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's so you could just like see the thought process. They just typed in Pokemon sealed and sorted by lowest to highest, and they're like, "I'm gonna make a killing. I'm doing this." Uh, hope we're not if uh, not offending. Who's ever amazing sealed copy of that uh, there is? There's also someone trying to sell uh, both copies of the game for six hundred dollars. Um, I bought mine directly from a guy who showed them in the cases, like the case packs. These are huge big box PC case packs, and I spent $33, so I don't know what that $600 guy is uh, is trying to pull here. No idea, but I'm glad you bought them. I'm glad you will soon be the proud owner of these things. I'm not super glad that I bought them, because I have been trying to make more, uh, you know, important purchases. What's the word I'm looking for? Considered purchases? Yeah, uh, take but I mean, these are pretty nostalgic for me, even if I never even owned them. I, I very like how often do you remember like a memory from when you were like 10 years old? So not very often. I, I'm still look, I, we all we all make a dumb purchase here and there. And uh, you don't have to beat yourself self I, up every time. I, At least I, this I is fun. This is fun. So uh, I'm all right, glad. John, do you want to talk about a, a historic, a historic and important game? I would love to. Are there any on this list? <laughs> Johnny, the Ben 10 Omniverse is on this list. There, there's so many games we're not even going to get to them all. But uh, I, I was talking about Mortal Kombat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I knew what you were talking about. So Mortal Kombat. What I, Mortal Kombat is just like peak 90s franchise, right? It's like pr- peak mid, like that late, like 92 to like 96 era. It's just like peak Mortal Kombat time. Right, I guess probably 92, right, is in there. Mortal but, Kombat is very mid. Yeah, well, I think so. We aren't Mortal Kombat people. But there are a lot of people that are. And it feels like tattoos and that should somehow go together. It feels right. So am I going to blow your mind when I tell you that the Game Boy copy of Mortal Kombat came with tattoos? Uh, you are going to blow my mind. Because I didn't know that. All right, hey, let me interrupt your pleasant background audio here. Mortal Kombat on Game Boy did not come with tattoos. And we're about to talk about the PC game, which did come with tattoos. But what happened for the next 10 minutes, I don't know how long we talk about this, there's a Mortal Kombat pre-order kit, the Mortal Kombat kit, sometimes called the Mortal Monday kit, because Mortal Kombat came out on Mortal Monday. And it comes with stickers... Temporary tattoos, trading cards, and a poster in what looks like a Game Boy-sized box. Super cool thing. There's a couple on eBay for $200. I wouldn't pay that for it, but it does have its own box. So what people did, they bought their little Mortal Monday pre-order kit, and they loved Mortal Kombat so much. The craziest thing is they love Mortal Kombat so much, we found two copies on Game Boy where people shoved 
the little tattoos and stuff into the Game Boy version of the game. Who is pre-ordering Mortal Kombat on Game Boy? What are you talking about? But that is what happened. Game Boy does not come with tattoos or any of this cool stuff. It's from the Mortal Kombat kit, which is the pre-order kit. Anytime I cut a segment, people are like, oh, I want to know what you were talking about in the cut segment, even if it was wrong. So, all right. Mortal Kombat on Game Boy does not come with tattoos, but I'm just not cutting it. Here it is. That's something we both learned today. I don't know, like, it's not mentioned on the box, so it must have been a sticker on the sealed copy. Did you find a sealed copy to see that? No, I saw I saw a sealed copy that didn't have a sticker mention of it. It's possible this was just a variant that, like, hey, I don't know, here's some tattoos. I don't know. I mean, like, a lot of times they do mention that stuff on the box, but... Uh... Yeah, it's not on the box, so, like, it had would have had to have been, like, a sticker, I guess. We didn't go through every variant, so I'm not sure how this happened, but they are, rest rest assured, there is a little sheet of tattoos in there, and it's a, a logo sticker, and then there's like a sealed packet of character tattoos, but I will warn you, if you just search for Mortal Kombat temporary tattoos, there are so many, there was so many promo items, they stuck Mortal Kombat temporary tattoos in just about everything they could, including this Game Boy game, so... That's a, it's a cool insert. Look, I love when we get, you know, I love dumb little things like this added to games. Love them. I love these kind of variants. And I'm super happy that this not only has the logo tattoo, but that like a bonus tattoo sheet as well. That's sealed. This is pretty cool. So it comes with the, the, this little tattoo sheet that has like three like shitty little tattoos. And then it comes with like a sticker, like an inch and a half by inch and a half square sticker of the logo. And then it comes with one of these like, it's like maybe th- three to five tattoos, it looks like, that are sealed with yeah. a, a cardboard band. And these are like rectangular tattoos of the characters. It's just so much stuff. It's and so and you, you'll on. never see this with a copy of Mortal Kombat. Like, I can't believe this exists, to be honest. It's uh, real weird. When when you put all three of these things together with the registration card, with the manual, with all the stuff that comes with it in the baggie, like you will have a very complete feeling uh, Mortal Kombat on Game Boy, and you will feel better than everyone who owns that game. Uh, also, that game is pure trash, so maybe Terrible. don't feel too bad. And this, because we've never seen this before, like I would very much not be surprised if this is a variant that like only early copies of the game came with like tattoos and stuff. So, like I was saying, Mortal Kombat did a lot of promotions with tattoos, and they actually had a lot of products. So they actually sold, like, these little temporary tattoo packs. There was, like, box, uh, like a box of temporary tattoos that you would put on, like, a liquor store counter that kids could come up and buy of temporary ma- Mortal Kids go to liquor tattoos. stores a lot in the 80s? I guess I wasn't there. Oh, those are the 90s. What am I talking about? Yeah, 90s. I mean, I that we just called them the liquor store, but, like, 7-Eleven classified as the liquor store. You never went into 7-Elevens? I didn't call it the liquor store. I don't know what's going on in the West Coast. I, I called I it 7-Eleven. Well, you know, I I grew up rough. So <laughs> what, what, what do you say? I grew up in poor neighborhoods where we went to places called the liquor store. Okay. Uh, full of cigarette moms and uh, drunks. That's just what was going on. Um, anyways, not only did they have that, Tyler, it's more per- pervasive than that. There is a PC version of Mortal Kombat which also has tattoos. Do you want to tell me about that one? Yeah, Johnny, there's a sticker on the front of the box that says free Mortal Kombat tattoos inside. And you open the box, Johnny, and there's free Mortal Kombat tattoos. It's crazy. That, how that, works. that seems like it's going to be cheap. Is that cheap? Uh, Well, it's definitely not every copy of the game. And there's one on eBay and he's asking $200 for it. Like, who knows? This is the kind of thing where, like, he's the only one who has it and no one's looking for it. So he can ask whatever he wants. I don't care about the PC version of Mortal Kombat. I know no one else on planet Earth cares about the PC version of Mortal Kombat. So he's just trying to gouge the Mortal Kombat collector out there who has to have everything. Um, I'm way more into the Game Boy thing because not only is Game Boy Nintendo, obviously, but like everyone threw out the Game Boy boxes and like the fact that not only does the box still exist, but like all the stupid junk from the box exists. Like, I love that stuff. Like, especially with kids, like you would... they. They would have been slapping Mortal Kombat stickers on themselves like it was nobody's business. Like this, These tattoos should have and would have been used if kids got these. Now, Johnny, I think you might know that I am a, uh, I'm a video game collector, actually. I don't know if I've ever told you that. Oh, so, I've never heard of it. 
I liked stickers as a kid and I never used a single one because it was mm. like so permanent to use it. And I wanted to keep it in like a condition where I could use it if I ever needed to. So I had a collection of stickers. They were just all unused on the sheet. So I also had this deal. I never used stickers. Um, and I think that was influenced by my sister because I don't know if you know this, but back in the eighties, a collectible that was marketed to girls was stickers. No, I hung out with the sticker girls in elementary school. They all had their okay. sticker albums with like the repeatable pages. Yeah. Well, no, these ones like these were like albums, like photo albums where they had like 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 a baseball card slot, but for your stickers. Or they had or it was like those old photo books where like you peel back that like plastic cover and then like put your sticker in a specific spot like you were scrapbooking your stickers. Huh. And my sister had a bunch of them and I remember like I used to ask her if I could look at her sticker album and she was very nervous every time I got near it because I was a clumsy whole candid, you know, idiot child who just destroyed everything you touched. Uh, so she wanted me nowhere near her stickers, but they had scratch and stiff ones in there, or scratch and stiff ones. So I really, I wanted to smell those grape stickers. I wanted to smell them so bad. There are probably sticker collectors. I feel like like stickers are such a generic uh, thing in like video games and stuff to collect. Like like Little Big Planet, the whole thing is collecting stickers in that game. So there must be like actual serious sticker collectors. And man, that has to be a great hobby because you'd never run out of things to collect, and they must be so cheap. Like you can go on AliExpress and get like a five thousand pack of stickers probably for two bucks. I mean, they probably look at that like trash though. They probably well, want I know the they good want stickers. the good stuff. But I mean, I bet the good stuff is not expensive. If you know about sticker collecting, let us know. What's the good stuff in sticker collecting? Oh, oh, you uh, guess what I have? Go, yo, check this out. I got a 2002 Apple logo sticker. Oh, people don't know how rare the 2002 is. That was the first year they started throwing them in with uh, MacBooks. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, those early Apple stickers, huh? Great. I mean, I don't know. Like, there, there's stickers is too broad of a category. They probably have their own niches, right? I, I bet there I bet there's like a bunch of like old scratch and stiff ones that are expensive and like a bunch of like Lisa Frank ones that are probably like premium stickers. Um <laughs> I wanna go look for like what's the first Lisa Frank set? What if we could find that seal? Like I bet that's impossible to find. Like no one has the first Lisa Frank set ever printed sealed. But if one came up on eBay, you know it's not selling for more than fifty bucks. No. Does anyone care? No, but I mean, it would be cool to know you had it. I like, I wonder, did Lisa? I'm mean, like, there has to be Lisa Frank stickers, right? Oh yeah, I, I looked at this not that long ago, but yeah, they still oh, make okay. stickers. All right, cool, cool. I I was reaching there. I'm like, I'm just imagining there has to be. So I'm glad it exists. First set came out in 1979. Good luck finding that. Oh man. Anyway, I want to hear about sticker collectors. You know, I'm not even kidding. People, when I say I want to hear these things, people think, oh, you're joking. I'm not joking. I I love to talk to other deranged collectors who are like me. Just tell me, just tell me your version of what I'm doing. Please. All right, Johnny. Tyler. Oh, God. John, let me just tell. I literally just put into eBay 1979 Lisa Frank stickers and there's 2,900 results. What a surprise. Cause it's just showing me every Lisa Frank sticker. Dad, you didn't mean those words. Oh Let me take God. some out for you. Why? Because eBay sucks now. And I can put 1979 in quotes. I know. And then there's no results, but why, why does it have to trick me? Why do I have to like, oh, all right, Johnny, let's talk about, something else don't don't buy that mortal Kombat pc thing <laughs> do buy the game boy ones then the game boy one i don't know if we said like I, we saw a couple copies for like 70 dollars. so a couple we saw one i saw two. Oh, you saw two okay yeah i saw two it's uh, that seems really weird that that doesn't command that much of a premium to me like i maybe people don't know and don't care i think that's the only explanation i mean i don't know maybe mortal Kombat on game boy sucks but I mean, uh, Game Boy, if you're collecting common, Game Boy, you're out of your mind. So it seems like something they should want. Yeah. All right, Tyler, this is very exciting. And I don't, I don't actually understand how this exists, nor why it has a tattoo. Prince Interactive for the <laughs> That's PC, it. It's Tyler. called Prince Interactive. You got it. Yeah. It's for the PC. Tyler, this is... 
a weird multimedia art game, um, kind of, right? But you you did some digging into this, and you said it looks like Mist. Please explain yourself. It is. It looks almost exactly like Mist. Like it has the same mouse cursor and thing. Like I I would not be shocked to learn this is running on the same engine that Mist uses. Whatever. Uh, you whatever think that Prince is. played Mist because everybody played Mist. You think Prince played Mist and was like, "This is it. I have to make a game using this." Prince one thousand percent played Mist, and he's like, "This is the future of entertainment, and I'm going to release music through this platform." And I mean, so he is the- an artist. Like some people just make music, but Prince fancies himself very much an artist, yeah. right? So, and so this feels like that. And so the thing is, there's these like really weird artsy games from this era, this multimedia era. And, like, two I'm really interested in are Alice, an interactive museum, which is a a Japanese adventure game based on uh, Through the Looking Glass. And it is, it's just got a bunch of crazy art. It's made by an artist. It's not made by, like, like a traditional game developer. I think, I think I'm thinking of the right game. Um, There's a... It's got, like, the stark white cover and, like, the shadow of Alice on the front, I think. Uh, the Japanese one is literally just a red box that says Alice on it. I don't remember what the okay. American one looks like. Right. But um, I think, no, it says Alice in Interactive Museum on the American one. I, I don't think it's, I, I don't think it shows Alice at all. It shows, uh, like, mm. paintings. What am I thinking of? Maybe that's the internal art. But I, I know which game you're talking about. We've we've talked about it before. But there's, a, so you think of, um, there's the LSD guy. I'll just call him the LSD guy. I don't remember his name. LSD, a very, very artsy computer game, or uh, PlayStation game where you just kind of like walk around trippy environments with like weird textures and it's, it's, it makes like this weird dreamscape. It's a very experimental, like what is the medium of video games type thing? And like the, the mid to late nineties had a bunch of these really kind of almost outsider art things where artists came and made software, not like Activision, which is a bunch of like engineering nerds who are making the games. And so this looks like one of those, like, kind of almost incredible games. And then I read all the reviews, and they called it, like, completely derivative, boring trash, complete ripoff of things that already existed. So apparently this is garbage. Um, That's sad. But the interesting part, so you're playing, like, Mist, and you're, like, kind of walking around Prince's studio and, like, his art gallery, and, like, then very prominently featured is his gigantic bedroom, which is uh, oh, an, yeah. an elevated bed, an elevated circular bed on a platform in a giant circular room, as Prince's bed would be, of course. Also very interesting, it contained unreleased songs. This was the premiere of Prince's song, Interactive. With, uh, uh, he made a whole song for his stupid PC game. Of course Kinda he cool. did. This, if this was an art project for me, it was committing. Yeah, and he had different versions of songs that later appeared on some of his other albums, but like they're they first appeared here, and there were different versions than the ones he released. Uh, and now that's cool. And like I listened to the song. The song's pretty good. Like he he seems to have tried doing something here, and I think that maybe. Whatever the game does, I don't know if he was involved in the game design. That part seems to have flopped, but he wanted to to do something. This game's like a hundred to three hundred dollars. If I'm getting you interested in it, let me just get you uninterested in it. Like the cheapest copy on eBay is like a hundred twenty five dollars. I'm sure there's a good YouTube video on this. Somebody's talked about this. Game. Yes, unlike Hot Wheels tattoo, whatever. There are people who have played through this on YouTube. All right. That's a that's a fun one. Like that's a game uh, uh, that I did not know existed, even though it was fairly popular. But it's interesting that it's there. I don't know how popular it was. This is 1994. I, I kind of have to give you the year here. Like if you don't know, this came out in 1994. Like you have to know what soft computer software from 1994 was like. Uh, in a word, incredible. But if you haven't it, used it, Microsoft it, Encarta. Go get yourself a copy right now. It's got a CD in it, and it's Prince. And if it's got the first version of a song, it's going to appeal to some music collectors, uh, you know, Prince collectors. So there, there's crossover appeal. That's what I'm saying. Like, people know this exists. But for some reason, it's never come across my eyes until today. Yeah. And yeah, and like, this seems like something that would be, like, impossibly rare. Like, there's the one copy on eBay and when it's gone. No, there's, like, four copies on eBay. I don't know. Yeah. Prince is popular. Who knew? <laughs> I, oh, most people, I think, knew. You know who Prince is. Okay, so 
let's go on to something that has hurt my feelings for many years, shall we? Absolutely. Stone Protectors for the Super Nintendo. This is a game that uh, it's like trolls, you know, like trolls with the big hair. Uh, if they were wrestlers, it had a cartoon. It's got action figure line. There's like a bunch of multimedia stuff for stone protectors. They were like trolls that had like this. I think they had like a stone in their chest or something. Anyways, there's this game on the Super Nintendo. And it's recently been re released by Pico Interactive or Pico Interactive. What I'm not sure exactly. I think that recently is a, a big stretch the, that had to be that's years ago at this point. No, no, I think it's like a few years ago, like recently. Last I said years. years ago, and then your response was no. Oh. I think it was like a few years. Not, ago. Well, I think <laughs> I know that. Look, it, it's late. I'm tired. You're tired, I, but I mean, I think it's like it has. It can have been like too long ago, right? Like you, when you years say years is a ago, long time. Like COVID years was meaning four what? years ago, dude. F four years ago. Okay. It was released. It's still for sale on their website, but it doesn't matter because that's the garbage version and you don't need it. Uh, they did release it on the Genesis and a couple other systems where there are prototypes for this game running around. If you care about that, you can go find versions of this game uh, for systems it never released on, but it was intended to. It was, however, released on the Super Famicom and the Super Nintendo, but the Super Nintendo version is exclusive that it has a tattoo. So I bet you expect, like most games, it has like a big splash on it somewhere that says free tattoo inside, because that's usually what they do. Instead, in the like the dumbness that is the Super Nintendo boxes and that like black bar that's off to the right of the game with the purple tab, like you open this side, it just says free tattoo inside in like the Super Nintendo blue green color that's pretty commonly used. So it's easy to miss that this game would have had a tattoo. I think you've, you've complained about this to me before. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it literally looks like... So, like, the Chemco logo is almost in the same color. Like, you, if you just glance at it, you'd be like, oh, free tattoo inside must be the publisher of this game. Yeah, like, it does not look like an offer. Um, most things look like an offer on a game. This one just looks like it could be anything. It could be the safety warning. It could be any... You, it's like, it's in the area that you just ignore. You're like, I don't care about anything over here. I'm not reading that. I'm paying attention to this box art. Um, anyways, it like made sure to advertise that it's from like the hit cartoon on the box, but it doesn't matter. The stupid tattoo is in there. This game also comes with a poster. So if you're going to get it, make sure you get the one with the poster. Also kind of annoying and hard to find. Here's another thing that's wrong with this. Tyler, I learned something today while doing further research on this game which is expensive and hard to find with the stupid tattoo. There are variants, Tyler. There are variants of this tattoo. Your set's not complete unless you have all the tattoo variants. Same with your so, NES set and the monster in my pocket figure. Unless you have all the colors, your set isn't complete. I don't understand what's going on. Like, to me, this says there must have been a sheet of, like, a couple of different tattoos. Like, did they release these tattoos and other products? Is there, like, some other product I can go out and buy and get these tattoos? I don't I Johnny, don't know. if you, you and your friend bought Stone Protectors, smash hit SNES game that is now worth $9 because so many copies sold. If you w went to school and you had a Stone Protectors tattoo, how embarrassing would it be if your friend showed up with that same tattoo? They had to put tattoo variants in there. So, maybe. So, uh, look, I, I'm I'm just I'm trying to analyze something real quick on the fly. I didn't think to do this. Um, okay, so the two tattoos that I've seen feature different different uh, of the trolls on there or the stone protectors, right? There's two different ones that are featured. So I don't know if there's only two, but there are five on the cover of the box. So I think there could be up to five different tattoos available this is the kind of thing where like it's kind of just something that's been out there forever and you've never seen someone say i collected all five stone protectors tattoos so if you're the guy who does it like you literally might be the first person who's done that maybe not the first person we've got those quiet crazy collectors but maybe the first person to ever publicly state that they've actually done this because who is crazy enough to do this this game's like 300 dollars and like more no with no, the no, no 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 it's like 400 to 500 yeah or 600 dollars um bananas 
Johnny, the uh... all right. There's a there's a buy it now for five hundred. It's got the uh... got a tattoo. I, I, on it's there. a green guy. It literally looks like he has a penis. I it's don't know what else to call one. this tattoo. It's the karate guy. The karate oh, guy. Okay, his leg hair. looks a lot like a penis. Um, um, then I'm not one, trying to be uh, rude. That's the stone protectors is the most unappealing thing to me. Uh, it looks super- okay. So garbage pail kids is probably the most unappealing thing to me. Stone most protectors has kids. big garbage pail kids energy. I don't know about that. I think these are, this is trash because I love garbage pail kids. <laughs> but do you love stone protectors? I don't. Okay, I know some people really like stone protectors. I don't know anything about stone protectors. I I know some people like it, but man, they just have like they just tr- it's like trolls with garbage pail kids. I just I hate it. And anyway, it doesn't look that rude and obscene, but it has a lot of that kind of attitude, I guess, without the obscenity. It, it, so anyways, yeah, it's kind of it's a it's not really rare, but it's like hard to find it complete, especially with the poster. And then with the tattoo, it's even another level of difficult to find. Um, I love you trying to like rationalize it. Like you want it so bad and you, so now bad. you like kind of want all fives. So you're just trying to tell yourself, Oh, it's not that rare. Like, why is this, why is this $500? You know, I want all of them. I I'm so mad that multiple, like I felt a little soul crushed when I found out there was multiple tattoos. Cause I'm like, okay, well, well, what if I just bought bit the bullet? What if I just pay once, cry once and got it over with. And then when I'm like, there, there's, there's going to be more. And I don't now I have to do research. I have to like go back through old searches. I have to check. I have to check internet archives for like pictures of this to see if anyone has it in their collection. I'm going to go to Instagram and like hashtag stone protectors, but because it was a stupid cartoon, no one's going to show pictures of the, it's going to be a nightmare for me. This is, this is a tragedy. I hope that we are now realizing someone's mid nineties troll for collectors so, uh, what, what am I thinking of? Like, Lunar has seven discs, but the seventh disc, this might be a print run thing, but the seventh disc is rarer than the others, right? It sure is. Why are there Stone Protectors variants? You don't know. There's no, there's no reason for this stupid tattoo to have variants. That means someone at Chemco, or whoever was in charge of producing this game, went and said, like, hey, it would be really cool if we just threw something in the box. How about a temporary tattoo? And that's why it seems like such bullshit. Like, they just, like, kind of squeezed it. I bet the the cover art was done, so they had to put the free tattoo offer off on the side of the box because it was such a last-minute addition. And so that's the guy who did this, he realized, like, oh, we can print multiple tattoos for literally the same price as one, so why don't we just print, like, multiple designs? Just print one but- of each of them. That makes sense. But, like, this, it screams of, like, such last minute one guy handling this. Like, what if he was like, oh, okay, we, we have uh, sheets of 10. All right, let's print uh, four of this guy, four of this guy, and then two of the last guy. And the last guy is rare, Johnny. Uh, no. What don't. I'm saying, I want there to be a rare tattoo. I don't think it's impossible that they made a rare tattoo for no reason. Don't say that. Do not. Oh, I love it. What do you, why are you like this? Don't is there a rare monster in my pocket color? Um, I don't know. God, I, you know, it feels like the green one is the common one. Mm. Ooh, what if it's, what if there's different ones? The green one is the most common one. Like, I feel like that's the one that always shows up as the guy who's always actively looking at stupid, uh, blemies on eBay every single day, checking my save searches. <laughs> That's, that, that's one of your like just stupid things you have to dig through just a bunch of blemies yeah well a bunch there's not many that come up but and every time i'm like oh no i'm over it i'm not gonna buy it it's like no nah, it's like 180 dollars for that one i'm not gonna buy it then it like sells and then that next one comes up is 300 dollars, and i'm like i should have bought that orange one at 180 <laughs> and then Lemier i'm like that's is the stupid. name of the monster in my pocket that came with the nes game monster in my pocket for anyone who is not keeping up right now yeah there's uh four colors Johnny, uh, to to tie this back into the last episode, instead of buying stone protectors with a temporary tattoo, you could buy a really nice copy of Super Metroid. Or you could have that tattoo. Uh-huh. 
It, you're going to be so happy when it's sealed away and you don't look at it. The thing is, Ooh. when you seal your Super Metroid cartridge away, you still got the box. And looking at a box of Super Metroid, you're like, damn, yes, I did it. Uh, how I feel when I look at a Super Metroid box is how people feel when they look at the shitty yellow NES box. I have no idea what anyone finds appealing about that box. But whatever people find appealing about that box, I find it in the Super Metroid box. Okay. I like the yellow box. It's fine. It's terrible. It doesn't it's even fine. have a background. It's ridiculous. It's ridi- Why does anyone like that box? I mean, it was such a last minute, like, oh, people are still buying this game. Oh, we got to put something that doesn't look like it's from 1986. Yeah, absolutely. Tyler, um, you have anything else you want to add to Stone Protectors, or shall we go on to f- more stuff that no. makes me cry? Tell me, uh, tell me another five hundred dollar game. Let's, at least, let's put this A and B with uh, with Stone Protectors. I'm I'm going to tell you at least five hundred dollars. How about that? <laughs> okay, um, sounds crazy. Uh, uh, the last known sale of this game was a buy it now, five hundred dollars. It did not last long on eBay. It is a Nintendo sixty four game. It is Rayman two. Do you know about Rayman two? Do you know? Uh, that's an incredibly popular 3D platformer that was ported to everything around the year 2000. Okay, well, there's more to it than that, because there's variants of Rayman 2. So there's a Rayman 2 uh, that is has a, just a regular, plain, non-metallic box. Just a, your standard print. No stickers on it. Then there is a metallic box, which has an egm or is it game pro a game pro sticker on the front of it it's both it says it has egm gold and it's game pro guy screaming rated nice and it says nintendo power gave it a quote of truly inspired design oh yeah so it's just a promo it's just a review promo great um i don't know if there's a a metallic version without that sticker there very well could be well with some gugan you can make it happen so that's true um there is another version, though, and it is the rare version, and as you've concluded, because you're listening to this episode, there is one with tattoos in it, Tyler. Wow. <laughs> Are you super excited? So my favorite thing about this box is because it becomes ridiculous. They had to put another sticker on it that says, Free Rayman 2 Temporary Tattoo Set Inside, and it comes in this like uh, temporary tattoo sheet. There's like, I don't know, like 12 tattoos in there this game comes with like some reg cards got like another release offer in it the manual there's a lot of things going on inside of this box and there's a lot going on on the front like with that metallic cover these multiple stickers it's a lot um and n64 you know the n64 has like a pantheon of like weird variant uh variants it's got a pantheon of variants i'm i'm doing great talking today anyways Rayman 2, for the people in the know, is one of those. Then you have, like, the Shadow Man with the sealed, like, glasses. Then you get things like, you know, your your warrior figure in your gauntlet, your little pewter figure. You've got the Hot Wheels, uh, or not Hot Wheels, Micro Machine, Micro Machine. Then you get your big boys, the plushie and your Rampage, and your um, Disney's Tarzan with the Tarzan toys. This is like... The big variants that are around that come with dumb shit for the Nintendo 64. And then like lesser than that, you got like Toy Story 2 with movie ticket variants. So there was a quick tour of uh, of other dumb Nintendo 64 stuff you can spend a bunch of money on. But this one's up there. 500 bucks at least, Tyler. At least. It is not seen very often either. I don't know when this came out, what the prints look like of this, but I've seen very few. Uh... Uh, the Rayman, there's so much Rayman bundled shit that I do kind of love it. I think it elevates it as a set because if this was a random game, like, all right, it would still be kind of cool if it was a random game. But the fact that Rayman has bundled t shirts, a beach ball, like all this just Watch. like stuff. Yeah, it's it's crazy how much like random crap they bundle. And I do like the fact that it's got the shiny box, it's got the two stickers on the box, it's got all the crap in the box. Um, I normally don't like that stuff if it's just like a normal game for my shelf, but the fact that it's the rare variant, I feel like I'm getting a lot of value by having all the stupid tchotchke stuff. It's almost the, it's like what Limited Run Games wants me to feel by including a bunch of cheap bullshit, 
but this Rayman 2 is actually exciting because it's actually rare. Um, Five hundred dollars exciting? No, that's a Super Metroid, but uh, it's cool. It, it, no, it's not that cool. It's coolish. There's also a, a variant with the stickers. Did you mention the stickers, Johnny? No, what stickers? This, there's literally an identical variant. So there's a the green sticker says there's a temporary tattoo set inside, and there's a purple sticker that says there's a sticker set inside. I would oh, not yeah. be surprised if the sticker set is literally just the temporary tattoos printed on sticker paper. Oh, man. I See, I haven't seen that variant, so that's probably in there. There's also some versions that have like uh, an ad for the animated series in there, because it was a Rayman animated series. Whew. A lot of Rayman stuff going on. Yeah. How much was the the sticker set? Did that go for more than five hundred? I don't know. It- I just uh, I just know that exists because Bird Dog Gaming, uh, Rayman variant collector in chief, uh, has. Oh, been- that's true. Yeah, he does love himself some Rayman. All right. That's uh that's what I had to talk to you about. Are you so excited? You heard about uh you know multiple games that are more expensive than Super Metroids. I don't really like it. I, out of those two, I would pick Rayman 2 10 out of 10 times. Uh, one, because Rayman's appealing, and uh, just fuck stone protectors. No, what are we doing with stone protectors? Not Rayman's mine. got a foil box. Look at that box. It's like, you look at it, and you're like, oh, that's too dark. <laughs> it's, it, it is not great foiling. Johnny, we are... Uh, there is one other N64 game I want to briefly touch on. That is much more obvious than Rayman. It's Fighting Force 64. Oh, God. Classic that people constantly bring up in conversation, Fighting Force 64. All the time. Uh, But right on the front of the box, it says, get, in very small text, it says, get your, and then in large text, free, and then in small text again, tattoos inside. So they they really want you to look at that free and see, like, what can I get for free? Oh, temporary tattoos. Um, I don't think this is a variant, though. I think every version of Fighting Force 64 had tattoos, and this is like 150 to 250 dollars. It's a very if you're like an N64 set collector, you probably already know to check if this has the tattoos. But it's a thing to check if you have the tattoos for Fighting Force 64. Yep, it it is. Uh, it is a basic one, but yeah, even, this isn't rare. So no, uh, but those tattoos matter. They matter to the price and it matters to if like when we do our, one of our next episodes are like inserts that matter and they matter to the price of your game and having the best version of the game, you will want it. So if it says it on the box, if it like very specifically yeah. calls it out on the box, it kills me if I don't have it. Like uh, th- having the, the, tattoos for the game boy mortal Kombat. i think that would be super cool but if i didn't have it i'd just be like okay well my copy is a version of the game that didn't come with it obviously but when it says it right on the box it's like it's just like screaming that your game is incomplete yeah you can't ignore it you the box is calling you out it, it's like oh yeah i missed it i can't believe i missed it i gen I if i find a game like that i generally go on ebay and buy the thing like as soon as I can, because it will drive me crazy. And the last thing I remember doing that was a long time ago, but it was for Alone in the Dark on Sega Saturn. You told me, like, read the box. It comes with a phone card. And I'm like, what? I don't have the phone card. What are you talking about, Johnny? And I immediately bought one with the phone card. Well, and don't worry. We're going to do a whole phone card episode, too. And there are plenty of those as well. One of the first limited editions ever was a Famicom game that came with a phone card. Man, can't wait to get into that. Uh, you want to know who cries about phone cards? Hey, the, shout out to our our friend Jason of PlayStation Library fame. Also formerly known as uh, Game Rave. And also formerly known as Danger Boy. Johnny, there's a lot more tattoo garbage, but we don't, like, we don't have time to talk about it. Like A lot of it's not interesting. Well, let's go through some of the ones, because I know what people are thinking right now, that this is something that only happened in the 90s, right? Like, this is clearly this stuff we talked about. It's all all 90s. So I want to bring up this one before we go. Deathmark Special Edition for the Nintendo Switch has a tattoo in it. I don't even know what Deathmark is. Uh, Is it an anime? But it's, it's a visual novel game. Okay. Oh, is it the death mark that you're getting? Oh, you're putting the death mark on yourself? You're getting it. You did it. So, I mean, there's a lot of 
There's a lot of weird games that have tattoos in there that like we didn't get to. Uh, Mirror's Edge. Did you know that that game had a sequel? Did you know that that sequel came with a tattoo if you bought the limited edition of it? Uh, yeah. So there's a it's there's weird. a few things to unpack here. It is one. It's like crazy that these exist past like I don't know 2002. Like I get like I don't know. I was I grew up. I became an adult in the 2000s and 2010s, so I stopped caring about temporary tattoos. So really, I have no concept of how much kids care about temporary tattoos. The idea of a temporary tattoo or even just like a sticker, like there used to be like those sticker vending machines next to the gumball machines, like they do not seem as cool in an era of iPads. But I mean, maybe I'm I'm just maybe it's a universal joy of childhood to have temporary tattoos. My son loves them. Okay, he nice. loves them. I mean, you are he, a you are a certain yeah, kind of father who is very willing to immerse him in stuff you grew up with. He is fine. No, like these are still coming out. Like you go to a party and then like the little party bag, there's always temporary tattoos. Okay, all right, temporary tattoos are still a thing. So it's still it's, a thing. I'm yeah. just biasing it and saying it, they only existed in my childhood. Yeah. When and did they come? Like, were they around in the seventies? Like when did what what? <laughs> What's the what we, we need to start from the beginning, Johnny. What is the history of the temporary tattoo? I don't know. Well, I'm well, I think it goes back to tattoos first, right? Do we have to analyze tattoos before we can talk about? How I mean, they we really temporary? need to talk about like Mendy and henna tattoos because we really need to build up to the history of the modern temporary yeah. tattoo. Yeah. Um, but maybe we don't. Okay. Uh, okay, because we're not anthropologists. So, like, maybe we don't have to go that I far. I mean, isn't we're, video we're just games just the, the study of culture, I, though? Yeah, we are dumb video game anthropologists, I guess. We could go get a degree. Let's make up a degree and go get it, me and you. How about it? What do you mean, make up a degree? Well, because you can you can pitch you can pitch degrees, right, at a department. You're like, oh, what I'm degree? an anthropologist. Anthropology, there's, and we but say I mean, there's already uh, anthropology degrees. I know, but you could you pitch you the the speci- the specifics of your degree. Did you not know that you can do this? Like you can be like, okay, this is what I want to do, and you can kind of like craft your own, uh, you know, degree. Like All right, you, that uh, you know what, kids, don't go to college, go to trade schools. Uh, it turns out it was a mistake the whole time, and you were right, just take learn, the... <laughs> yeah, learn to fix a toilet, you're going to be way better off. Uh, AI can't take your job, then. Uh, yeah, toilets are always going to be broken, garbage always needs to be picked up. This sounds like I'm making fun of that, but I'm 100% not. Uh, oh, yeah. As a, guy, as a guy who just fixed a toilet. You got, uh, did yeah. you get paid well for that? I did not. I had to... I had to go out and buy the parts myself and then uh, do it myself and get, you know, get dirty and wet. You're taking someone's Not my job. favorite thing. Um, well, that's what YouTube is for. Blame YouTube. Ruining everything. What else did you want to talk about in regards to games that came with wonderful temporary tattoos? Okay. Nice transition. Uh, I, there is a bunch of stupid BS because there's just so many tattoos. Like you guys, you've never looked for this probably because why would you? But there is so much tattoo junk associated with it and like it was just a part of the marketing strategy it's like oh well we're gonna make some stuff so we are definitely gonna make uh some stuff that looks like tattoos or a reminiscence of tattoos um this is my favorite one tyler the the game boy sp that has a tribal tattoo print on it what is this thing? Someone Why? thought we were going to go through this whole episode and not bring up the Game Boy Advance SP that has a tribal tattoo on it. Uh, an iconic Game Boy Advance? Question mark. It. I mean, everyone knows it, right? I know. Every time I look at it, I just think it is so of an era and like not something I'm nostalgic for. I just look at it and I'm just like, ugh, so stupid. But it's there. Uh, I hate, I hate handheld variants. I think there's too many. I can't believe the prices that people pay for handheld variants, which I realize in some sense, all collectibles are made up, but it's just like, it's like this manufactured thing to collect. And like, it's like, everyone's falling for it. They're like, oh, you put Pikachu on a 3DS. I'm going to pay $700 for that 3DS now. It, It just seems so crazy to me. But the tribal GBA is so genuinely dumb that I actually love it. It is 
It is so good. And I can't find it on eBay because it's not showing me tribal GBAs. It's showing me any GBA. Let me go ahead and put uh, I tribal know. I, in I quotes. Just, I just put it in and it put gave me 1,100 results. And I'm like, no, no stupid. Put the parentheses in there. Just so it's like Anyways. a little more than $100 for a nice one and like maybe $300 complete in box. Yep. That's what I, that's what I saw. Worth sold. it. Uh, um, buy it. It is so, oh, not only, I didn't even, so it has the tribal tattoo on the back and then around the controls. What were they thinking? This is, this is so, who at Nintendo had this idea? Someone was drunk. Like, there's no <laughs> other explanation. Someone got drunk. Like, who did, what power did you have over them to get this through? I love it, guys. Guys, is, is someone out there, I don't care. Like, get get your, like, childhood Game Boy that you had. Like, with, uh, there's so many Game Boys you had, one specific one. Like, go get that one. All that Pokemon stuff, forget about all that. If you want to get this, I give you 100% permission to go and buy it now, right now, for $450. So, th this seems like it's probably the dumbest U.S. thing ever, right? Uh, but are, it's not. are you about to because tell me something a, else? There's a PAL version of it, too. That, I don't know if you've seen the SP boxes that came out uh, in PAL territories. I, I say PAL, but it, I, just Europe, because GBA is not PAL. It okay, no, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, they're, so anyways, they came in these like nice kind of square boxes. You've seen these GBA boxes for the SPs. There's a tribal one of those as well. I mean, it's the same one. It just comes in a nicer box and tells you it's a limited edition. It just comes in a better box. So it wasn't just limited to America, is my point. That it, okay. it was out there in Europe as well. Uh, you can get this stupid thing. I mean, I can imagine the kind of music. Oh, that is a much nicer box. Look at that thing. It's got like yeah, the that, tribal design in the background. Yeah, this is like a whole style. There's a Zelda box like this too. It looks so beautiful. I kind this almost like the way like someone put thought into the UK box, uh, like it almost makes the design look cool, which it definitely is not. Right. It's so ugly. Anyways, um, yeah, not just an American thing for everyone who's like, God, Mar Americans are stupid. We we tried to sell it to Europe as well. I don't, who just who did this? It's the most like two thousand two thing I can imagine. Oh man, you're looking at a different box than me even. All right, there's multiple variants of this. Collect them all, kid. I hate handheld variants. I don't want to talk about this anymore because now we're talking about handheld variants, and it's my least favorite thing. They're and too expensive. Who wants to spend three hundred dollars on all this shit? Let me move us on. Hey, remember Mortal Kombat and, and the tattoos that that came with? There's a Mortal Kombat Two strategy guide. It's the official fighter's companion. That's companion with a K. It's from Midway, and it has tattoos inside. And this is from 1994. So get yourself some more video game adjacent tattoos if you want them. This is not quite a tattoo, but tell me if you think it counts. Tekken 6 had a pre-order. If you pre-ordered Tekken 6, it came with one of those tattoo sleeves that you can wear. One of those fabric sleeves. Yeah. That's the pre-order bonus. That's better than temporary tattoos, because I would never use temporary tattoos. But you might put that thing on and be like, look at this, and then take it off immediately and put it back in its box. One million percent. Also, it's really funny. It's not even a sleeve. It's like maybe six inches long. Yeah. It's not a full sleeve. If you've got a tiny arm, it's a sleeve. But it is advertised as a sleeve. And those kind of things aren't expensive. These are like cereal box items. Anyways. Yeah. Um, but where would we be without visiting Nintendo Power? A bastion of gaming lore. Do you know the cover of Nintendo Power 50? Oh, do you know a classic so, Link's Awakening? It, it, I know that off the top of my head. Yes. So this cover, it's a it's a fairly well-recognized uh, edition of the magazine. It goes for a little bit of money. This came with some tempor temporary tattoos. It's like Super Nintendo style uh, tattoos are in there. But also much later. 130 issues later, 183, we also got some Pikmin tattoos. Do you love it? I don't love it. Um, oh. You know, I mean, these, uh, the Nintendo Power 50 ones aren't that bad. I mean, you got the Nintendo Super Power Club. That one's dumb. But then you got Yoshi, the Link to the Past Zelda logo, and Blanca. That's an all right. That's it's an all right little like insert. It's just, su hey, Super Nintendo tattoos. Like, this is popular right now. Um, they just vomited it out there. 
Yeah, I definitely did not know that this was Link's Awakening off the top of my head. For anyone like actually wondering, like, oh, should I know the iconic Nintendo Power covers? No, Nintendo Power is trash, and I, I hate it. <laughs> Uh, I did know that this was Link's Awakening. Okay. It's not like, well, I collect all the Zelda covers. Like, there's a, a very special few Zelda covers. It's like, oh, I gotta go get the Zelda Nintendo. I covers. mean, it is kind of cool. It's got, it's, uh, does this owl have a name in Link's yes. Awakening? I don't remember. But it's the owl, and then it's got the Master Sword behind it, and the whole cover is gold because Zelda. It's kind of cool. Yeah. It's doing the Zelda thing. Go If you like Nintendo Power, go look at this one. Final Fantasy Eight. Oh yes, Tyler. You love Final Fantasy VIII, right? The most popular Final Fantasy on PlayStation. All right. There's a strategy guide for it from Brady Games. You want to pay $30 for it? If you do, you get some Final Fantasy VIII temporary tattoos. Great. So stupid. I'm not even going to comment. I don't want to talk about the Final Fantasy VIII strategy I just, guide. I just Johnny. want people... I We don't need to talk about it. I just want people to know that that exists. Just like this other item... Have you ever heard of the game Eternal Champions? I'm sure you have, right? Sure. Sega Genesis, you love it? Sega CD. True. Guess what? 7-Eleven had a whole series of temporary tattoos. If you bought a Slurpee, you could get it. You could get an Eternal Champions tattoo. You know what? All right. That's that's stupid. But you know what? Is that If that's like a dollar on eBay, like go and get that and throw it into your case and you'll feel kind of good about it. Right? Yeah. And there there's there's a bunch on eBay that you can go find. I'm gonna I go think check. they're more than oh, a dollar. Oh man, they're more like, oh, you can get it for less than ten dollars ship. You know what? Yeah. I don't hate getting those and putting those in your case. I'm definitely not gonna do it, but see, like I don't what? like shit that sits on your shelf because it's just like it's like wasting space. But when you get like vintage merch, like era appropriate stuff like this, and you could fit it in the case, I think that's great. All right, this one is for you. You you tell me about this one because this is this is a Tyler item. You were poo pooing Zelda. Oh, huh, who's on Nintendo Power? Who would buy a Nintendo Power with Zelda on the cover? Tell me about the Ocarina of Time pre order bag, huh, Tyler? Yeah, the Ocarina of Time pre order bag rules. I just it's a don't bag. like Nintendo Power as an editorial magazine. You bought a bag. Oh yeah, I bought a bag years ago. Johnny, this is, it's Ocarina of Time, the universally agreed upon greatest game of all time. And it came with tattoos. Yes. So this is a, this is a gold bag. It like literally like a piece of garbage shopping bag, but it's Zelda. So it's gold. It's got the Ocarina of Time logo on the bag and it has like a bunch of garbage in it. It's got like, uh, like a poster, temporary tattoos. That's all I remember because I don't remember off the top of my head, all the junk that's in it. Did it come with a a t-shirt? I don't think it came with a t-shirt. But uh, no, no. this bag, uh, like not the rarest bag in the world, because there was so much hype around Ocarina of Time. It was one of these almost like Halo 2 moments to pick another really popular anticipated game off the top of my head. So like people saved their pre-order stuff, kind of like everybody has the Halo 2 Collector's Edition because it was such a huge launch. So these are around, but they're like two to four hundred dollars, depending on condition and completeness. And I totally have one johnny because it's ocarina time and it's worth it okay and i and it's it's also one of these items that like what do you do with it it's a bag of paper junk so it sits in a pile somewhere and you're like yep i've got that i can mention that i own that on a podcast seven years after i buy it one time and everyone will think i'm super cool because i've got the bag i was with stefan when he bought one at a show and he was very excited about it and I still feel the same way about it. I'm like, it's a bag. Do you have a, the bag? It's like though? a plastic, a plastic bag. I don't have it. Oh well, you know what? You're not a millennial. You don't realize that Zelda: Ocarina of Time is the greatest game of all. It's not. It's not the best Zelda. It's not. It's it's it's, it's probably not the best Zelda game. <laughs> Maybe no, the best. It's overrated. Game. I don't know. Look, it can be a great game and still be overrated. It's overrated. Anyways. This is one that we found, and this I didn't know about these. You didn't know about these. I don't know who knows about these. But Nintendo released a series of tattoos called Body Tunes. Okay, for kids. Right. What? Well, I'm I'm gonna stop you right there and have take issue with your premise here. Nintendo did not release anything. Some random company licensed Nintendo characters uh, okay. in 1992. Uh, well, it says Nintendo's Body Tunes. 
Okay. Okay. I mean, it's got the official seal on it. Right? right. So what do you want me to do here? It's a Nintendo product. It's got the Nintendo seal. Nintendo release tattoos. Fine. Fine. All right. All right. (laughs) All right. Anyways. Body tunes. Temporary tattoos. There's a bunch of them. Uh, at least five different sets. They all come with three tattoos each. You can find them on eBay for not too much money, 10 to like $20. Uh, the Super Mario Brothers three ones are like kind of all over. There's some Zelda ones. The Peach ones are pretty common, and this is like Peach Super Mario 2 era. Um, then there's like two rare ones with like Koopalings and uh, baseball that we saw. Uh, there might be more than that. Someone will have to do more research. But yeah, there's just a product called Body Tunes that has... Nintendo characters on them that Nintendo uh, sold. Cool. I, I I mean I hate these, but hey, I mean the you got Super Mario 3 and Zelda, which are like the kind of obvious stuff to pick. I love that Peach gets her own set. Cause I don't know, fan favorite character. That that would probably be like the quote unquote rare one, just because you would expect it to be because of gender roles. Uh it's cool. I like. Don't buy these. They're really cheap. You don't have to buy them. You can just know that they exist. Ooh, I found another set. There's also a Zelda set with like Moblins in there. Ooh, whoa, great! <laughs> I love 1992 temporary tattoos of Moblins. Yeah, who doesn't? Um. Anyways, that so there's a bunch of these. <laughs> there's at least there's at least six. Um, and probably more. Anyways, uh, Nintendo also had another tattoo product. So remember when I was telling you about those boxes of of Mortal Kombat ones? Like, kind of, it would be like a trading card box that you just go buy temporary tattoos? Yeah. So even earlier than these, from 1992, there were tattoo sheets that came in, in packs, and they, and the, uh, this I'm surprising you with this, I don't want to tell you what. So there were wax packs, come with bubble gum, and temporary tattoos that were put out by Tops, and it was 1989. And you can get all kinds of. You want a bloop? Uh, you want Zelda's like dumb face from uh, the the Zelda two art? You can get that. You you want? Uh, oh God, what's his name? Um, from Punch Out. Multiple sets of that um, that you can go get wax packs of. They were 25 cents each. Cool, huh? Oh, yeah. No, that's that's trash. I mean, you're not really surprising me because I've looked into the early quote unquote Nintendo cards and these always come up because all the Nintendo cards from the 80s, like that's the junk wax era. You can get all of that super cheap. Yeah, you like, can go I'd, buy a I'd, box of these. Because it's 80s Nintendo merch, like I'm not a big merch guy, but like you could literally get a pack of Nintendo tattoos for $5, like a vintage 80s Nintendo tattoos like it's not that bad even if they are common and garbage yeah. anyways it exists and uh, you can you can get it or not I suggest not but you're right it is junk wax era stuff just interesting to see um, that's it for like the list of extra stuff I want to throw out a few other things quickly so there's a lot of promo items out there where people are just like Oh, uh, what's an easy promo item? Let's just do like see, uh, like for Sea of Thieves. We'll, we'll give them some tattoos. Assassin's Creed has one. Starcraft two. Tons of Nintendo, Mario, Gears of War, Pokemon. Tons of Sonic. Temporary tattoos are just everywhere. Of any pop culture item, they probably made some promotional temporary tattoo. Anyways, don't. Those are just like promo stuff that's outside of being attached to a game specifically, outside of just being the IP. Um, Here are some things that while we were looking, I found to be fails or punts. Um, The games I felt should have had a tattoo that didn't. Tyler, Sherlock Holmes in the case of the Rose tattoo. No tattoo was included with this game. All right, Johnny, uh, is Sherlock Holmes in the case of the Rose tattoo based on a book? Yes. Uh, Okay, what is... What is the Rose tattoo? I'm not telling you. I don't know. I don't think it's based on a book based on this Wikipedia article, but like, what if it's like something that symbolizes the murder? I don't know. What if it's bad? I don't know. It just look, it's a video game. Um, I actually don't know if it's a book or a short story. Like it feels like they weren't making up new Sherlock Holmes stories. So maybe 
Anyways. All right. Could have came uh, with the that's, tattoo. That's I think, matter. you know what? I feel like Sherlock Holmes and the case of the rose tattoo for the freaking PC may have skewed towards a slightly older audience than the temporary tattoo that, audience. That's true. Uh, this is a 1996 game, but it, and it's part of the Lost File series. So this is the sequel. Uh, the case, uh, it's the sequel to the case of the serrated scalpel. Anyways, doesn't matter. I just felt like, Hey, you got a tattoo in the name. Should have had a tattoo. All right. What else you got? Tokyo tattoo girls for the Vita. It's all the games with tattoo uh, is what we're going. We're, okay. we're just listing games but that have tattoo this, in the name now. This game you power up via tattoos. Also, it's a Vita game that came with a big box special edition. From Nis America, like which always puts okay. chachis yeah, and stickers like, all right. in them. If you're coming out with like one of these stupid modern editions on a game that has tattoo, like this is a signature worthless piece of paper that you could put in your game. Like, yes, this that should have came with tattoos. It makes no sense. Okay. All right. And now this one very specifically, Last of Us 2. So Ellie has a tattoo in that game. They make kind of a deal of it. They feature it a lot. They feature it in promo material. Don't care how you feel about the game one way or the other. This is a thing that happened in the game. They feature this stupid tattoo. So the statue edition of Last of Us 2 comes with a sticker of that tattoo. A big sticker. One that would be the size of the tattoo if you put it on yourself. But instead they gave you a sticker of it. Just give us a tattoo. I think no one would have used that temporary tattoo and some no amount of people would open like some people like for a game as popular as The Last of Us, they will open the limited edition and actually use like the stuff like they'll put their statue on display. They won't be like little meticulous, stupid little collectors like us. And I think that a fan of The Last of Us might put The Last of Us tattoo on like their MacBook or whatever. So I don't hate that it's a sticker instead of a tattoo. I don't consider it I- a miss. I just feel like we could. Well, why not both? It doesn't cost anything. I mean, yeah. Limited run games would be like, how much paper stuff can we print and put? Yeah. In there? How, oh, God, I can charge an extra ten dollars for that one. Anyways, didn't come with it. Um, I, I'm not a sticker guy. My wife put stickers on her like cases and stuff, and I like people who put stickers on their water bottle kills me. I like. Hate what it. are you doing? Stop are you, are, it. Yeah, you're talking to me. Are you kidding? Yeah. I had. Oh. Just- <laughs> I have my water bottle in front of me. It comes in a silicone sleeve, and I took the silicone sleeve off because it it makes it too complicated for me. I'm not, yeah, I'm not the, I'm not that guy. I'm not like people at our work have stickers all over their laptops, and I'm just, I feel anxiety. I've got a sticker that says my name on it, and I peeled that off of it. I'm like, get that sticker off of there. Anyway. I put a I put a Python sticker on the back of my laptop so everyone knows I learned how to code one year ago. Good. That's a joke for all three of you guys who have Python stickers on the back of your laptops. I went to that conference. I learned. Good. Anyways, that that's all I've got. We talked a lot about tattoos. We did it. We did a tattoo episode. I I don't believe how this episode came together. It is 4.30 in the morning. We literally, we were talking, I I messaged you like two days ago and I was like, Johnny, we got to have a topic for the next episode because I want to do, I want to do an information episode and I want to do the research beforehand so we're not scrambling at the last minute. Mm -hmm. And then as we were putting the episode together, we literally like 180 changed on the face. We're like, I just, I'm getting too excited about these tattoo games. Yep, we just, uh, we did it. We just, we 180'd for no reason. This is, this is what we do. Uh, so now that other informational episode about inserts will have to come later. But this is still part of the greater, the greater improve your collection episode. If you have these, go find your tattoos. I mean, I think it's, <laughs> it's fascinating how many games we talked about that people won't have. But, uh. I think the real pick of the show might be Mortal Kombat on Game Boy. Uh, I think that the compared to like the Punisher, like fuck the Punisher or Stone. What is it? Stone Protectors. I was going to say Stone Warriors like Mortal Kombat. It's a bad game. The Game Boy version, at least. But like, that's a beloved franchise that 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 should be more valuable. I'm hyping it. It should be a $250 variant at least. Let's go. I kind of agree with you. I want to clarify something just because you mentioned it. You said Ben 10 
for the Wii U's got a tattoo. It doesn't have a tattoo. It has a tattoo for your shirt. It's an iron-on transfer. Um, so there is a t-shirt decal uh, variant of Ben 10, and it's a sticker only on the seal. So if you just have uh, an open box, you won't know unless it's sealed. So open those boxes and check for the t-shirt decal of Ben 10. Kind of hard to find. That's it. Johnny, I'm ready Shall for we... a collector's question. Shh, tell me about a collector's question. Let's do it. What is your favorite religion or mythology within a video game and why? Deities, godlike beings, insane cults, more traditional religious organizations, no hold bars, and all interpretations open. Asked by Thug Bard. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm partial to all the Cthulhu stuff. So just like, give me in that Cthulhu mythos. Give me a game that is from... Well, I mean, lots of things lean on it. I mean, you've got the Cthulhu games that are like Call of Cthulhu. You just have it all over. There's a bunch of PC games. Eternal Darkness leans into that. Just, you know, the great old ones. Give me the great old ones. What about Golden Order Fundamentalism? No, thanks. All right. I... Uh, I... <laughs> I'm also not a big fan of religion, so like I'm, I'm copping out a little bit. It's like I don't... No, I don't love organized religion so much. That's not. A, I'm not against anyone else doing it, but for me, you know, it's not something I lean into very hard. This is such a specific question that I feel like uh, Thugbart is really into like Warhammer 40k, which I know like goes super deep into the lore of some of that stuff. And the only thing I could think of off the top of my head that's like a religious symbol that I think of in video games is Vivek from uh, Morrowind, because. He has an entire city named after him. I don't know. That's just something that comes to mind for me. But uh, yeah, I don't know. What's a like? There's probably cool yeah, I mean, cults. Like, <laughs> I, I love I love when games play with like, uh, you know, I love it when they do it in books too. But like when they lean into like the weirdness of Catholic mythology, I like I get into that. I'm like, oh yeah, tell me about all the weird things. Like if you've ever looked into the mythos of you know catholicism it's wild uh you know it's just a religion that it's like yeah demons vampires all this stuff could be real so you get some weird stuff there um you know what I, so i know uh there are a lot of japanese games that do love that kind of stuff and there's probably games we've never heard of that have like you know biblically accurate angels and all that kind of stuff yeah. which would be super cool um like i don't but a lot of the lore stuff like Diablo has interesting lore, but it feels like it's a little overwrought now. Um, I used to enjoy that more, but you know, you know what? I've got a way better answer than Vivek from Morrowind. Uh, Thank God. Almost like the entirety of Ultima following Ultima four is super cool with the avatar. Isn't it like a, it's a destiny quest, right? Like, isn't it all in service of a, of, of, of a God? Is it in service of a god? It, I, I don't so. even know. I don't think so. I mean, the whole no. point of the Avatar is that he's like the greatest at everything good. And so the point of Ultima 4 is like you've got the eight virtues, which are like honesty and sacrifice and just like all the good things you can be. And there's no big bad guy in that game. The goal of the game is to become like a paragon of the eight virtues uh, and, like, you got to go through dungeons and kill stuff <laughs> because it's a video game. Um, but it's super cool that it's it's not about killing the big bad guy and there's no world in peril. And, oh, man, do I love a video game story that doesn't have the world in peril. Man, saving the world is the most boring thing ever. And uh, the weird, the just the fact that, like, you become the avatar and everyone just kind of knows who you are. And, like, you're not God, but you're close. I think the Avatar is really cool. It's a cool idea, and that's part of what makes Ultima 4 really special, even if it's uh, kind of mediocre game gameplay-wise. All right. What else we got? Um, Johnny, here's one for you by NZ Collector. To YouTube face or not to YouTube face? Mm. What's one you've seen that gives you the worst secondhand embarrassment? Hold on, say the last part again. Uh, what's a YouTuber that makes a YouTube face you see that gives you secondhand embarrassment? All of them? 
all of them. I I feel secondhand embarrassment from cringe stuff so hard. It it hurts me. It like that's why I just look at those things, especially when I like the person's content. Beside from that, there's not. It's just anyone. Anyone. It doesn't matter if I like their content or dislike their content. It's hard for me to get over. I understand why they do it. They like feeding into algorithms, but it it hurts, man. It hurts when I like someone and they feel the need to do that. I would just wish that they could get by without that. Um, but yeah, you know, you just- can, you can get by without it. You won't get as many views, but you will retain your dignity. And that's, I hate that. That's the, uh, like the calculus that you have to do, but you know what? I posted a great article in uh, in the Discord, and it was stop pretending that you're famous or stop acting like you're famous. And it's just a short blog post that's like, if you're making shit, no one's gonna look at it. You're never you're never gonna have an audience, and no one cares what you're doing. So why, if you have a YouTube channel and you're pulling in 700 views per video, like why are you doing the clickbait titles and the YouTube face and like all like the the pander to the idiots basically is what you're doing when your audience is like the 700 people who actually care what you're talking about. Like you don't need to to pander to an audience that doesn't exist is what the point of the uh, the article is, which is why. Uh- I don't do I YouTube listen. face Johnny because just because it technically does work um, to some extent, uh, but that's ridiculous to me. I have too much dignity is what I'm saying. As, as you could tell by listening to this podcast where I am full oh, yeah. of dignity. So um, there's a lot of YouTube channels out there that don't like you and I both will like listen to Rudy on alpha investments and like, he'll make dumb faces, but he doesn't go like lean too hard into actual YouTube face. Um, but there's a magic content creator named Jim Davis that I like. And and, like, he does YouTube face sometimes. And it's just like, uh, you're better than this. You don't need it. Um, you know, uh, does Jason Graves do YouTube face? I don't think he does. Right. SNES drunk. Doesn't. Oh, SNES drunk. Doesn't big shout out to SNES drunk. Uh, Jason yeah. Graves does do ironic YouTube face. Like, I, I think ironically, though, but I like he doesn't lean into that every video, though. It's not like, yeah, that's every time, uh, you know, again, lean into it ironically, but not not all the time. Um, yeah, that was like you can get it done. You can get it done, but doesn't just doesn't always work. I guess the only ones, the, the worst YouTube face to me is the small channels, uh, like a Jason yeah. Graves, but I don't think, I think he's an amazing YouTuber. Um, but when like, it's clearly like someone's struggling for views and they try the YouTube face and they're not good at it. And it's like, like everything about the co- the composition and the lighting and everything is just wrong. And they're like, oh, it, it's so cringy when, they and then like you the, see, and then it's like that 700 the new YouTube video. It's like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah. Make um, better con like at that point, like if you're at 700 views, you need to make better content before you need to worry about like getting picked up by the algorithm by people clicking on a funny face. Um, I follow a YouTuber named Default Gen and he never does YouTube face, and I love I love that about him. So if you haven't checked out his channel, you should. Nah, maybe not. I don't even know. Uh I probably don't like any of my videos anymore, Johnny. Um that's oh, the old you know me. what? You know who doesn't do ga- uh doesn't do YouTube face? Johnny Game, Rave. Game Rave. PlayStation Library does not do YouTube face. That guy has so much integrity. Yeah, love it. Johnny, what uh different topic. We're a video game collecting podcast. Uh he was just talking about on YouTube how many new subscribers he got from his Xbox 360 video he did. He did like an Xbox 360 like hardware video. I didn't watch it because I don't care about Xbox 360 at all. I know Jason loves it. You were just talking about how like multiple people were making Xbox 360 YouTube videos. And, like people were getting excited about collecting Xbox 360. Yep. What the heck are you talking about? What are Games you seeing are in the collecting spiking. world? Spiking. Games are spiking. And you know what's ironic about that is some of the people who made those videos were at Midwestern Gaming Classic with us like Mr. Rightway and they were there digging through games to to find. So like there was a, just like a collective of these YouTube personalities that came out and released like oh get these xbox games rare and blah 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 right and uh so just a bunch of games like 5x and that took them from like 
$20 to $100 or they were like 50 and then finally hit like 150 or $200. But yeah, that's a, a thing that happened. There's a a cadre of uh of of uh, Xbox 360 games that are now spiking. Like Autobahn Police. Oh hell yeah, Autobahn Police guys. We did that's, it. That's we did the it. One. Well, you remember how you said it wasn't an investment? Well, go search the price of it now. I mean, there were how much? Like, it's games like that. Like I know that the copies must be out there, and it's just like how many are listed on eBay at any given time. But like one person could literally buy the three copies available and like just push up the price artificially, and people are dumb and they'll go along with it. Um, well, and that's pretty much what happened. So like they released this video. There was a buyout of these games, so now they're. They're all gone. Um, so Autobahn, please say, is, uh, I mean, now, and then they're relisted, obviously, but by people. Yeah. Um, but they are, they're out there. And what the like, fuck? how much do you want to pay $200 for it? I know so you don't. So it's like $150. But so, like, we, we've we talked about Autobahn, please And the only reason I was ever interested in it is that it's one of those games you look on eBay and it's like, wow, there's one copy of this game available. Yeah, I guess I want that. I'm look in the past week. There's like ten copies that sold for hundred fifty dollars, two hundred dollars. It's like this is getting flipped and hyped immediately. <laughs> like there's yeah. so many copies available all of a sudden. Now it's a two hundred dollar game and like, oh, let's let's all get excited to find and flip these. Okay, let's talk about March twelfth price. $49. March 17th price, $77. March 30th, $70. April 15th. That's five days ago. $269. So if you're if you're the guy who is like actively like hyping and trying to flip this, like, yeah, go ahead and and buy out something like this and flip it. Like obviously, I don't think that's a great thing to do for collectors, but I understand your motivation. But if you're like quote unquote investing in something like this, no. uh, and you see like uh, Titus the Fox on Game Boy is one that uh, that I remember really thinking that there's no copies out there and getting really worried about. If you were like, oh my god, if I buy these two copies, they're the only two copies on Earth, and they'll never come up. This is the perfect example. This freaking Autobahn Police. This game looked so rare when it was twenty nine dollars. Now that it's a hundred fifty dollars, they're listed. Almost every day. Yep. It's like these copies are out there. It's just that once people know about them, they will look through their bin of garbage, look through their game stores, bargain bin, and they will find all the copies when it's worth a hundred dollars to do so. I'll give you another example. Infernal hell's vengeance, February 16th, $19, $12 or best offer, best offer accepted $10, $12 March, Eight, $19 best offer accepted with free shipping. Okay. March 24th, $18. March 24th again, 26. Suddenly it's going up. April 3rd, $43. April 4th, 59. And then we hit this peak. All of a sudden, April 13th, $150. April 15th, $189. April 15th, $199. April 16th, $140. April 17th, $189. What is happening? This was this was literally a game that someone said $12 in free shipping and took a best offer on a month ago. So people are getting suckered. Uh you you know what you can get for that price, Johnny? A complete in box Super Mario Kart. <laughs> yes. What are we did? <laughs> Why are we buying Xbox 360 garbage? Like, go ahead, buy, like, good stuff, buy interesting stuff. Maybe if this is interesting to you, but it's not, it, it is 100% not so interesting that it wasn't worth $10 to you, but now that you know it's worth $110 or whatever, now it's interesting enough to buy. Like, do not buy that shit. That is obviously the wrong thing to buy. Yeah, so there's, like, a bunch of people out there, like, I bought the rarest Xbox games. Xbox 360 explodes and every video that then talks about how Xbox 360 uh, is just, ex you know, they're just exploding. Yeah. So Mr. Rightway did a, a video saying these Xbox games are becoming expensive. And then like, yeah, two months ago when I just told you those games weren't expensive, now they are expensive. So 
maybe just uh just look it's like i don't know if things are shutting down or or whatever but yeah there's a bunch of you know uh hashtag rare videos for 360 games that are all just kind of cropping up over the last two months and and driving these prices remember when this happened with ps3 and then all those prices just tumbled back down i this is if you are into this this is the worst time to buy please don't do this just wait uh johnny my favorite uh thing that i've seen recently is on the top of reddit game collecting and uh not a website i patronize but i do frequently see content from it uh, someone posted eBay solds for a game called Morphex that no one has ever heard of. This is an Xbox 360 game. If you have heard of it, congratulations. They were saying it was like alert. Someone is buying out all the copies of Morphex. This is market manipulation. Don't be deceived. And it had hundreds of upvotes. Johnny, if I, let's say I bought out all the copies of Morphex and like I have my stock, but like I don't want to keep checking eBay to keep buying the new ones that pop up now. What would be the perfect thing for me to do? I would go to Reddit and say, alert, someone bought all the copies of Morphex. Make sure not to panic because that makes a bunch of idiots panic and buy Morphex. It's like, watch out for this market manipulation that I'm taking part in. Uh, yeah. Just so please, ridiculous. People please be so careful dumb. and don't, yeah, don't accidentally trip and buy my games. Just buy Super Metroid. What are we doing, guys? Morphex? What is Morphex? It's a super rare game that you didn't understand was one of the most collectible objects that you could get. Clearly, you don't understand. Uh, Johnny, do you know what uh, do you know what Morphex is? I have never heard of that game in my life, and I've heard of a lot of video games. Oh yeah, Third person shooter. Oh, on the Xbox 360? Weird. It's a shock, I know. Why don't you tell me about one of these survival horror games I must have missed on the PS2? Yeah, this looks... I can't believe... Like, this looks like the most generic game that... It's like AI made this game. Is it... What, maybe people know what this game is. I've never heard of this game. But if you just imagine, like, generic Xbox 360 game... Look, guess what? Guess what the sets are? It's a, it's like a, a burnt-out apocalyptic cityscape, and he's walking on metal girders, and there's lots of bloom lighting. Isn't that crazy? And it's like the whole game is brown. I've oh never seen an Xbox 360 game in my life, but something told me this is what Xbox 360 games are. Weird. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah. So uh, make sure everyone go panic and buy Morphex. They're still available for like 25 bucks. I, I really think Morphex is going to hit it big. Uh, lots of YouTubers so. talking about Morphex. Uh, I heard Mr. Rightway say it's sold out and impossible to find. Uh, yeah. Like, and I don't really know. I don't watch that guy's content, so I don't really know anything about him. I just know what, what his face looks like. I don't like have anything against the guy. I, like, I, I just don't know anything about him. So, um, except that he posts content that's probably not for me. All right, so I, I don't I don't know what he knows or or doesn't know. So I don't want to say like he doesn't know what he's talking about. Or that's not you the call out of, anyone for any reason. You I, just, that's like, what I'm saying. You, I don't know. We talked about this topic. About Literally, him. you it's, just brought it up like fuck, Mister Rightway. He was at the Midwest Gaming Classic buying the games he's interested I, in. <laughs> I'm saying he was there. Uh, no, like when I saw him specifically, uh, and I think this is a thing that I know he does. Is he? looks for rare greatest hits games i think that's where i know him from right that's i think his thing uh not the playstation one yeah greatest hits yeah sorry yeah okay so and i and i literally was at a booth where he asked about greatest hits games but you know like obviously he if he's making a video about it he's not going to going to ignore those things right like he did the legwork on that at least and uh yeah like you know what, what do you want? I don't, I'm not mad at these people for doing that. I'm just saying, hey, this is a thing. Like, But you also can't make a video and be like, hey, things are rare and expensive, just like you said, and be like, oh, yeah, uh, things are rare and expensive. Be careful, guys, because uh, I'm buying them. And now they're like, I bought some. Now they're rare and expensive. Seems uh, disingenuous. Johnny, can I, uh, before we move on, I have one more cherry to add on top of the Sunday of buying out Xbox 360 games. Morphex is available new from Deal Tavern for twenty three dollars. Oh yeah, so How much? that whole Reddit post was about a game there is practically infinite stock of. 
you know, for for the size of the hobby, if Deal Tavern has a case of like 80 of them, that is literally infinite of, of a game that no one cares about that will be on eBay sealed forever for 20 bucks. Cool. All right. Sounds great. Uh, okay. what, what else do we do in the show, Johnny? What are you buying? What are you playing? We, we talk about what we bought and what we played. So Tyler, tell me, did you play anything? Uh, I've been playing V Rising with my wife. We have like almost 200 hours in it, Johnny. You're doing it's it's a lot of it's a lot of like hitting rocks and trees. If you're into a hitting rocks and trees game, and you also like some good ARPG combat, and you have a wife, that it's it's the trifecta. What can I say? Okay. As long as you're having fun, um, you know it's is it fun? Like it's all right. It, it's like, like the do- I get the dopamine because like the numbers go up, right? And you get stronger, and you fight enemies with new patterns. Like there's the dopamine factor, but like I also get a very. My time is not, like, actively spent thinking a lot and like really actively engaging with the game. Like it's not a, it's not a complete bullshit game. There is there is a bunch of like twitchy, combat stuff, uh, in V Rising. Uh, but then I think I've I've been talking about the witness on video game Sage, and like the witness is such a or, or like Baba is you for another uh, recent puzzle game example. There's such games that like you look at the puzzle, and like I'm working stuff out on a pen and paper, and I'm like drawing lines in Photoshop, trying to like figure things out in the puzzle. And, like every second you're playing the witness is like you're engaged in the witness, and. Uh, I just feel like in my limited lifespan, I should be playing more games like that and fewer games like V Rising. But I don't know, maybe. Right? Like, it's the kind of like TikTok versus doing something with your life. Like, it's so easy to sit back and watch TikToks and it feels great and you get dopamine, but doesn't it shouldn't my life be spent like doing something? I'm not going to tell you how to live. All right, I guess. All right, since you said that, I'm gonna I'm gonna go into one of those dopamine boxes that just like injects me with heroin for the rest of my life, and I just feel great. Okay, I'll miss you. All right. I mean, maybe don't do that, but you know, I can't tell you what to do. I just talk about dumb video games on a podcast. Johnny, I what got you know? a piece of Sega CD history. Oh my god, tell me more. So. <laughs> I I don't do a lot of active video game searching because there's not a lot of holes that I'm like really looking to fill right now. But what I do have is a backlog of ancient save searches that I do comb through and just see if any of my weird stuff got a hit. And I got a hit on electronic book decoder for the JVC XI. I'm sorry, what? One of the most obscure console things ever. And it wasn't the actual software. I wish it was the software. So I'm not 100% sure what this is. Literally, all I know is that it exists. And because it exists, I want it. So let's just, to catch everyone up to speed, Sega came out with a console called the Sega Genesis. They had an add-on called the Sega CD that slapped onto it. For some reason, Dad, I'm not going to say why. Daddy Milk's going to tell me I got it wrong. JVC made the JVC XI, which is a combination Sega CD and Sega Genesis. Uh, it was called the Wonder Mega in Japan. And it's a karaoke machine. Yeah. <laughs> also, because Japan. Uh, and it has a couple exclusive discs. Uh, Sega CD format discs. One comes with the console. It's called What is XI? Is it part of the Sega CD set? I don't know. Probably not. But when you're looking at that stuff that's on the edge of the set, one of these things that comes up is Electronic Book Decoder, which seems to be like an ebook reader for this rare Sega CD console. And the only thing you'll ever find of it, there's one picture of the cover and it has a $200 price tag. And this picture is ancient and it's like a scan. So at some point, someone has this and knows what it is enough that like in the 2000s or 2010s, they were charging $200 for it. And that is the only time I've ever seen this thing. Uh, I'm so, glad you found just anything, just right? something from it. <laughs> so uh, 
it, it, if you do consider it part of the set, which it very much is not, it's like one of the rarest Sega CD games, games, one of the rarest Sega CD things you could possibly have. What I found is a JVC, like a stereo dealer, had a bunch of old service manuals, and he had a JVC service manual. It's it's like the kind of manual you would get when you buy a receiver. It's like, I don't know, like 13 pages of like that kind of tissue paper that like shitty manuals come in because they don't want to give you good paper for electronic book decoder, which is so weird because it comes in like a Sega Genesis sized case. Why does it have this giant service manual? And it has like a uh, hole punches like it was clearly in a three ring binder at some point. I this I'm guessing this was like from a JVC service center in case anyone called in for support on this product that sold so poorly it barely exists. It's kind of cool. It was only 18 bucks. I mean, I know this is like some real bullshit, but when I've had a save search for like 10 years and I've never got any hit on it, I'm going to buy the $18 thing that's a hit on it, Johnny. I'm super excited you bought this thing. It's pretty cool. I'm not mad at all. Yeah. You know and what? You did it. I, I kind of did it. I, I, I tell people that I'm I'm over owning stupid rare shit because I have all the rare shit. But if it's something I was already looking for, I'm going to keep looking for it. If you have an electronic book decoder, hit me up and I'll give you $200 for it. I think you're lowballing them at that point. I probably am lowballing them, but you know what, Johnny? I don't want to pay more than $200 for it because what am I going to do with it? I don't even own a JVC XI. Fair enough. Um, all right. Well, I'm glad you found it. Did you buy anything else or is that it? I mean, that's pretty cool. No, that's it. I'm a... like, I, I know you explained it, but like, I don't think people like fully understand how we've talked about it in ways of like, this is this thing that's out there somewhere. Maybe one day we'll see it. So you finding anything, it's like being lost in the ocean and fun suddenly seeing an island in the distance. Yeah, if you've been on the, the video game Sage Sega CD collecting guide, that is probably the best, like, organized, uh, uh, like, Sega CD collecting guide. And that does not have electronic book decoder on it, even though it is, like, a Sega CD piece of software, technically. Uh, Sega Retro does have it. It's not so rare that, like, it doesn't exist on the internet, but very little documented on it. I think... Uh, almost. The electronic book decoder is a cartridge, and it decodes ebooks on cd format just a weird thing that obviously jvc was experimenting with that did not take off at all most of the manual is regarding search functions like they really thought people were going to use like a sega genesis controller to search through ebooks just a completely insane idea yep well it's uh it's, it's proof now we we know it's here one day we're going to find the rest of it. Anything else you want to throw out there? No. What'd you get? All right. Well, Tyler, I bought some pretty good stuff. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, Ren and Stimpy buckaroos on the Super Nintendo. You have been I, on a poster tear. Nope. I did not buy the poster. Man, that poster is so expensive. I did buy the manual because I was missing the manual. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. No, a manual came up for a very cheap price. I mean, sub $100. And I was like, oh, yeah, uh, I'll make an offer on that. And then they accepted. And I was like, whoa, I did not expect I did not expect that offer to be taken. Um, the game goes for like six to $800. And people with the poster want like $2,000 for it. Anyways, I got the manual pretty happy because I don't I didn't like ever really plan on checking that manual off, but I, I did I, that. I did it, Tyler. And you want to know what I got for even less money than the price of that manual? Yes. Okay, good. Cause that's why we're here. I bought Grim Fandango, the first print hey, of Grim Fandango. Right. Big box PC. I, so, Johnny, what's the first print of Grim Fandango? <laughs> I, I just realized I, I, that's the game I've owned for so long. I've never looked at it. It's just such a ubiquitous copy that um, they all pretty much look like first prints. So to dig into like what actually made the like runouts, I don't know. But I've got the box that uh, looks like all the other boxes on eBay, okay. at least at first glance. So. All right. It's not like the re-release uh, like DVD case. It's the big box oh, version. Like, okay, so just a big box copy. Yeah, sure. All right. Hey, yeah, Grim Fandango. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it came with the strategy guide. 
And that is a thing. It, it, here's like a funny thing about uh, PC big boxes because they all like every one of these games had strategy guides and lots of people bought them. So sometimes you'll see like the strategy guide be sold with the game if it was like just someone who owned it. The strategy guides a lot of times fit in the box, which I think is wonderful. Uh, I mean, it does. It makes the boxes easier to damage, which I don't really like. So what I like about uh, like the mid '90s Lucas Art stuff is that their big giant thing that they included to fill the box was a folded up newspaper, which both filled the space and isn't heavy enough to damage the box. It just seems like the best possible thing you could put in there. Yeah. Well, that's uh, not how this came. So, anyways, got uh, Grim Fandango, all the inserts, all the nice little stuff in there, and uh, hooray, got it now did it been meaning to pick this been up on my list for a while and i'm always like don't buy it around halloween because that's when everyone's thinking about buying it and then it's more expensive so uh, i bought it i remember to buy it off season yeah that game rules as uh as someone who shit talks uh tim schaefer because i don't like some of his later games nearly as much as some of his uh earlier games uh that's obviously one of his best games um is that a game that like so we just talked about lists that is a game that like perennial game on top game lists ever. Was that even on the uh, the IGN top two hundred whatever? I don't think mm. so because they had so few games from the nineties. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna I'll I'll do uh, I'll do a look if you like. Oh, there's a list of hon- top one hundred game creators. Okay, that's not what I wanted. I remember, like, what else came out in 1998? Th- these lists used to be just full. It, it was like the list of the best games from 1998. You used to see games like uh, like No One Lives Forever 2. Like, I feel like top lists always used to have No One Lives Forever 2. And now who the heck even knows what No One Lives Forever 2 is? It's like such a... It, it did not exist in the public consciousness going forward. All right, 100 li- of all time. Grim. I want to go look at nope. like some historical. Like, give me a a fifteen year old top games of all time list. I want to see what changed. Yep, not not on their most recent list. All right, I'm not saying it has to be. No, I'm just telling you it's not. I mean, they got Monkey Island. Maybe they were like, "Ah, we got one Tim Schafer." Well, we we did. Game. What are we gonna we do? We got it. We we did it. That's the right. Um, okay. So that's uh that's what I bought and I did not play anything. It's been way too busy to play games. Cool. So we done? Is that it? We're Is done. That the show? That's it. That's the show. You can find us on Discord and uh if you want to be a part of that Discord, you can do that for $4 on by joining us on Patreon. That's collector or patreoncom Quest. if you want to. If not, don't worry about it, but if you want to join the Discord here are bonus content that's the way to do it and tyler anywhere else they can find you besides uh discord and video game sage uh i might make a youtube comment if you make a hot wheels tattoo designer youtube video okay so find tyler in the youtube comments you know youtube a bastion of sanity in its comments um definitely that's the place to talk but try not to make too many youtube comments because you know it's it's owned by google and they're they're making they're making a profile on you Yep. Uh, like people say a lot of insane things in YouTube comments, and I'm just like, mm, may not want to do that. But whatever. But Johnny, like when that, we are when we that, are talking on like we we upload this ourselves to SoundCloud, and somehow AI it went in like my podcast app. It has a little transcript thing. Like some someone somewhere is spending computing resources, valuable computing resources. People love their AI computing resources. Listening to our three-hour-long podcast, like, nothing is safe. I, They're listening to us talk to each other. Hey, we have started to hit podcast aggregate lists for video games now. I Whoa. don't know if you know that. Look at us. Like, we got mentioned in a couple, like, best of lists, and I was like, what the hell is happening? So we're really I, doing it. Thanks, I still AI. think that's that's crazy that it transcribes a three hour podcast. It is crazy for no reason. We didn't ask it to. Just <sighs> nope. So, but see, you bring up an interesting point because now I need that transcription to get better. And uh, like, 
I need someone now to take those transcripts and then create metadata and tags for all of our episodes. So oh, the AI I can, can do that search. automatically. It could come up with a, a a catchy title, probably. It could come up with tags. Yeah, uh, but I I need to, like that's great. Like it should do that because I want to like harvest that data then back and be like what ep- what did, what games did we talk about? And so I like be like oh on episode two hundred a long time ago we talked about this game so. Um, that would help me as a content creator go back and uh, be like, no, we talked about this 15 times, Tyler. Let's talk about something else. Johnny, I don't uh, I don't think that uh, your Amazon Echoes and Google Homes and all that are, are listening in and, and making profiles of everything that you're talking to. But Gen Z is so spineless with the privacy invasions that they'll allow from big tech that in 10 years, I have no question that there will be some product that everyone has in their home that does like, oh, it's the it's the AI companion. It listens to literally everything you say and sends it to Amazon and Google and Meta. They will find a way to actually get that in their house. You're like, hey, hey, Google, did I a- ever tell my wife X, Y, and Z? It's like, yes, Johnny, in 2017 <laughs> in your home. <laughs> so you're like, oh, shit, what? Um, so. it's going to be that. And you know, the thing is they'll probably figure out a way to get people to agree to do it on their phones because yeah. that would be the most logical thing. And then your phone will like literally be always listening rather than like the conspiracy theory that's, Oh, I talked about mattresses and it gave me a mattress ad two days later. Oh, uh, look the, I've already written the ad for it. All you need it to do is solve fights between married people or just p- people who are coupled up uh, about if they told one person something or not. That's the only thing. No, I told you that. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. You never told me that. I listen when you talk. No, you must not have. You must have forgot. All you need to be is like, hey, Google, did I ever say that? When did I say that? If you just pitch it as a device that does that, that settles that fight from ever happening, people are just going to start agreeing left and right. All right. They won't so- understand the ramifications and consequences of their actions, but that's going to happen. Gen Z, I hate you and your willingness to put up with bullshit. God damn it, in my day, we had spy bot search and destroy, and we hated this shit. Yeah. We we put so much software on our computer that was invasive to stop other things from being invasive. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and now, now the operating system is the spyware. Now Windows 11 is adding more ads, and they're watching what you do to tailor your ads. It's crazy. It's crazy. This is a reminder to everyone. Remove all microphones from your house. And put a little, don't get a regular post-it, get the the full post-it, like the full stickiness post-it, put those post-its over all your cameras. Because, forget Fold Face ID, well, you use Face ID to unlock your phone, put a post-it over that camera, what are you doing? Yeah. All right. Anyways, uh, don't forget the Tyler's tw- tinfoil the- hat chat. Yeah, I'm like, don't forget your tinfoil hats. And thanks for listening to Tyler Rants Like a Crazy Person <laughs> uh, on the Conspiracy Quest podcast. All right, here we go. Anyways, that's it for the show. Thanks so much for listening. Bye!